Oh, well, hello there. Oh, well, well, well. Hello. Ahoy. How's everyone doing? Oh, fucking living the dream, man. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Fucked up some uh, pepperoni jalapeno uh, pizza for dinner. <laughs> you know? Good what? combo. <laughs> fucking jalapeno. The first time you said jalapeno, <laughs> I just never recovered from that. <laughs> <laughs> I, ca I can't help the fact that I'm uh, that I'm such an accomplished linguist. Okay. <laughs> just, your lexicon is huge. Thank you. I just yeah. <laughs> have an obfuscating vernacular of many different languages. <laughs> Jalapeno. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I was trying that uh, inscription game today. Oh, oh how was it? <gasps> uh, fucking fantastic. Really? Holy shit, that game is good, man. Interesting. Okay, well that's good to yeah. know. It's definitely a little on, like, it can be a little on the tough side for a card game, you know, like sure. uh, Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering and stuff. It can be a little bit tough sometimes, um, but it's kind of, it's, it's, that's on purpose and it's for a goal and it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and wow, it was such a spectacular game. Highly, highly recommend trying it, even if you're not a really big fan of those kinds of card games. Interesting. Okay. I'm yeah. going to have to consider giving that a, giving that a checkout. Yeah. Yeah. It's very spoopy too. If ever you're looking for another spoopy one to put in the back pocket, just yeah. load that one onto the list of spoopy, spoopy games, man. Um, but in, in the game, I had a, a, a coyote card. And I definitely just deliberately called it a coyote card to play <laughs> at all day. Coyote. <laughs> yep. Use coyote in a sentence. <laughs> I went and saw a real big coyote outside. <laughs> coyote. <laughs> ew. Done, done and done. Ew, ew, ew. I hate that. I hate everything about that. Yucko, so, yeah, dude. Chat was, chat was not a big fan of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely, definitely recommend that game. Interesting. Okay, that's taken into serious consideration. Yeah. Also, are you gonna I... say? Is it? That... Are you gonna say what you, what we did the what? other day? No. Oh, what? I was just what? gonna say it's not it's not anything. We went what? to the movies for the first time since <gasps> the pandemic. Wow. What did you see? Yes. We saw Dune. No spoilers. Damn it, see the for fuck's sake! I was so excited because uh, Aaron and I literally got a subscription to Crave. Which is Canada's okay, yeah. version of it. Oh. Nope. Not available. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Only on HBO Max. Yep. Yep. Which Canada doesn't get. Yep. Dude, how, how I need to it? tell you, mm -hmm. this is a movie yep. that you have to see in the theaters. Really? Like to see it on a small mm. screen would, would ruin the movie. If really? If it's safe yep. in your area, definitely yep. would recommend. If it's safe in yeah. your area, absolutely. 100%. I'll take it next weekend. Yeah, yeah, dude, wow. like, and I want to go again. So, like, when you guys yeah. go, let us know, and we can all oh. make a big movie night because, like, wow, it, I, I want to see it immediately. Holy it was, shit! Wow, I think it is the best movie I've ever seen. Might not what? be my most favorite. Wow, like, wow. like I'm just mean like in its craftsmanship and its yeah. perfection. Yeah, I believe it is the <laughs> best movie I've ever seen. Really? Um, at my favorite? I don't know. Right now, I think so because I just saw it and I loved it. But what is absolutely undeniable in my mind it is the best movie wow. i have ever seen wow the, acting, the sound design the sound score the visuals the story wow. are all the absolute best they are perfectly crafted with basically I, no flaws as far as i can tell okay. <laughs> holy yeah. fucking we were, shit okay yeah. we were like ideal we were primed we were ideal audiences kind of thing sure. we were yep. dying for a movie and, <laughs> and very ready to have a good time watching a movie and be dazzled yeah. um, but even still i think it would hold up even yep. if you weren't uh, so jazzed as we were yeah so, so i have to know what movie previously held that title so i kind of know where the bar is for you good question excellent excellent question best movie that i'd seen previous to that probably uh the godfather oh, oh my gosh wow really Interesting. yeah i thought you were wow. gonna say some daniel day lewis vehicle. you know what i would honestly say Mm. that I think is perfectly done from soundscape to acting to story to lighting to execution. Parasite. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Parasite yeah. Was also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Parasite, yeah, Parasite was like a perfect execution yes. of a vision, right? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I would say that same level of perfection is in Dune. Wow. And 
it's 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 just it's a different venue for it kind sure. of thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah like like the Godfather is is a perfect is a perfection of a vision kind of thing, sure. right? Sure. And um, uh, this this to me was even somehow reached a little bit higher. Wow. It was it it, it was just like absolutely completely surreal, and uh, I, I plan to watch it a thousand times over my lifetime. <laughs> that's fucking crazy, I, dude. I, yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, this is exciting. Ooh, Ooh, yeah. That's very a... exciting. It is, and, and, and like, really, you do have to watch. I, I'm a little bit sad that at some point I'll have to watch it on the small screen. Like, it won't be in theaters anymore, and I'm gonna have to watch it yeah. on my TV. And it'll be good, but it won't be great. Is, uh, it won't be great. It very won't be like I saw at the theater. And very it was, interesting. Oh, wow. Wow, dude. Do not see it in 3D. Do now, not see it in 3D would ruin it completely. Oh, that's true. That is yeah. true. Do but now we got to cancel. We got to cancel Mar, man. I got to get back to the theater. I got to go. We got to watch it right this second. <laughs> We're all going right, to midnight showing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there wow, he goes. Man. Oh, dang. I spoke too soon. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. Yeah. Okay. So highly, highly, highly recommend. That's fucking amazing. Uh, I'm really excited. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely fucking spectacular. I was actually going to talk a little bit about uh, a. This is I don't know why this is this is not the venue for a personal uh, revelation, um, but I came to it just a little while ago, um, and uh, I it, I don't know why I want to talk about it, but I want to talk about it. Yeah, do it. Is I have realized that I have a consistency problem when it comes to executing a task okay um when i go to make music for example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i cannot consistently make something that i enjoy okay and sometimes with almost no effort i can make a song yep that i don't know where it came from it's so amazing sure and other times no matter how hard i try i can't make anything sure and now that's pretty standard for people right when they go to make music sometimes you just can't get the the, the jams flown sometimes you can sure um but this is like when i used to play tennis it was the same way some days i'd be able to beat the best players and some days even the worst players would be able to beat me i noticed it when i did uh pvp in uh you know world of warcraft and stuff like some days i'm literally better than everybody else yep and some days i literally can't even get it started sure and i'm realizing this this kind of uh thread okay for me where in most things that i do in life i swing pretty hard between like genuine greatness and an abject failure okay um mm. and for me it's really tough because i i strive for consistency so much in my life that this unreliability in myself was is, is something that's kind of hard for me to accept because i feel like i should be able to dissect the properties of what i do when i do something well and replicate it sure but I literally can't. Even when I replicate the things that made me successful, yeah. I can't do it again. Sure. Personal, and, personally? Uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, accepting this, I think is going to be very powerful for me, man. Yeah, 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 yeah right? dude. Yes. I'm yeah. like, that's stupid. You should never give into that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you should be on the 24-7 grind. If you're not, then what the oh fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> the worst. But, uh, that's, in that's incredibly... I'm going to cut you off. Fuck you, Lesio. Uh, oh, there, oh mother... <laughs> All right, you want to throw down? Okay, let's do this. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> um, so it's actually, I forget exactly where it was, but I, I came across a random YouTube video years and years and years ago, and it's actually talking about this exact phenomenon that you're, that you're talking about. How sometimes you can just be, you're in the flow and you're out of the flow, you're in the zone, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And it turns out there's actually, um, I forget exactly how how it's worded or, or whatever, but essentially there is a state of the human mind that elevates and it's actually known as, oh, he's in the zone, you know? Oh, like that's, yeah. like, that's Wu that's Wei. That's actual the, thing. Yeah, that's Wu Wei in the philosophy of Taoism. Wu Wei is the flow state. And that's what yeah, you get into state. when you're really focused on a on whatever oh. you're doing. Yeah. yeah. 
And the idea is that you get there by being like clear of mind and like free of stress and not not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow or this stressful thing or that stressful thing when you're just focusing. The, the, the example that a lot of people use are rock climbers because when you're rock climbing, you cannot afford to be worried about, did I send that fax? Have I checked this email? You're focused on, holy fuck, what rock can I hold on to so I don't die? And so they're often seen as people that can really easily get into Wu Wei, which is the flow state because they're focused so much on exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, I've definitely had that. Like I, I play games, I'll play PVP things and it's just like, oh God, I'm having an off day. And then other days I'm untop untouchable. I'm a fucking God. Yeah. yeah. If this um, is of, uh, if this, sorry, go ahead, last deal. Uh, I was just going to say like the, the thing that I've personally kind of done to kind of get into that mode like uh, like i think the problem uh and this is just from i'm, I'm talking from personal experience so totally. you know yeah your mileage may vary totally. but um i feel that because you know you you're so used to uh procedure protocol as a scientist and just kind of like in your life like you said you you've kind of dissected and trying to replicate yeah and not being able to replicate i think it's a little like like the issue I think may be that the the thinking is a little too clinical yeah. and maybe if you can I guess what I'm trying to say here is don't try don't try just get lost in it let the flow happen because as a creative typically yeah you go in with an objective I'm going to make music but maybe if you can't not think about it, like if you cannot let go give yourself a limitation like I can only use this synth or I can only use two synths or I can only use a piano synth or um, I have to have a melody and a bass line. That's it. You know, like mm -hmm. if you can give yourself a limitation or just n go in and essentially sketch, just play around with it, you might be able to consistently get into that kind of mindset without realizing it. And um, uh, I mean, the worst thing that happens is that you make something that you don't like and you throw it out and you do it again. Uh, best thing yeah. that can happen, you actually make something that you enjoy and you might tinker more in it. So, uh, I guess, you know, from my personal point of view, from making music and just that type of thing, just don't think about it. Just have fun. Just have fun with it. If something sounds cool, go with it and see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think my, my problem comes largely from the disappointment of failing when I know I have it in me not to. That is a tough pill to swallow. When I yeah. know, when I know I have the capacity, I've seen it multiple times to not fail, then failing feels like I did something wrong, right? right. Like, uh, like, I know, I know it doesn't have to be that way. I, hell, I've done this before. Why can't I do it again now? Right. And that's, uh, that, I think I'm learning how to be okay with sometimes just failing at something that I've excelled at many times before well, and not exactly. considering that as a failure on my, that's not a, that's not a failure of me. That's just, that's just the way it goes. Well, and, yeah. and, and uh, the, <clears throat> I, I like this expression because I think this is totally related. A lot of people agree that uh, creativity, so a couple, a few of the things that, um, that still bamboozle, like even the most learned neuroscientists and quantum physicists are moments of creativity and moments of genius. They don't have an, a good explanation uh. for it because, because the average human brain is so similar they have no way to explain things like Beethoven, Shakespeare, right. Picasso. Yeah. They have no way to explain it. But what they can say is that these, these many of these incredible works and many, when, when you talk to creative people, many of their most favorite or most uh, inspired works come from a, a particular state of mind. Like it's when they're just really in the, in the groove. And the thing is, you, can, you can't really control that. That's the thing that is difficult mm -hmm. is when, when you say, you know, this is the thing that I know that I'm good at and now I'm not doing it and it feels like a failure. You can't control your mind in the sense that uh, just to wrap up this thought in a bow, the way that I always like to describe it is that um, when people say something like uh, my heart beats, that's what they say, they say my heart beats, but they don't say my mind thinks. 
they say i think well that's that's right. not necessarily true that thinking happens to you the same way that your heart beat does you're almost always thinking you're very rarely in complete control of what you're thinking about it just sort of drifts from thing to thing so in the same way these moments of creativity are kind of at the whim of your mind which is constantly going and whether or not it's in a, an area that's going to be conducive to uh, creativity isn't super under your control if you're mm -hmm. if you're stressed, That's if fair. you're having a shitty time, you can't exert 100% total conscious control of your mind for the entirety of the the creative process, at least not right off the hop. So it's not yeah. necessarily about a failure on your part as much as it is being at the mercy of the monkey mind, which you know loves to find yeah. things to feel shitty yeah. about and yeah. sap your creativity. <clears throat> and part totally. of that, and I feel like uh again uh experience totally Ma making a space. Or making it clear in your mind it says you said you were beginning to accept it you know essentially make a space either in your mind or physically like in your your studio it's okay to it's okay to fail you know like yeah. if if that's like because right now like in the back of your head's like i know i can do this i know i can do this well what if you you know in the back of the head instead it, it was it's okay if i fuck this up you, you might you might be a little more unbound i guess yeah i think and 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 to put, put a finer point on this too is is like mar like literally D, D is an overwhelmingly creative process sure. for me mm -hmm. right to to build a session in a way that is entertaining and engaging and immersive and all this uh, requires so many different aspects of creativity and I worry so much all the time about whether or not what I have done is going to be fun and then afterwards I worry so much about whether it was any good and <laughs> oh, I try so hard to ensure a consistent level of goodness sure. in the right. D, D sessions right sure and to fail in something like that is to fail you guys in you having a not fun session to fail myself in not enjoying doing it to to fail anyone who's listening who didn't like that session and so to fail creatively when it comes to a D, &D session is Quite, a, uh, quite an overwhelming thing, it sounds yeah. like. Quite you know? overwhelming. It's, it's, yeah. it's very high stakes, which is all, all, often the antithesis to, to being creative. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And, and, you know, over a prolonged period of time, it's it it can be very daunting, the the concept or potential for a, a total failure of a session. No, a total failure of a session would actually be quite interesting for nothing to ever be interesting from <laughs> yeah. start to finish yeah. and right. no one to enjoy any aspect. <laughs> that would actually be quite something. But right. even the little failures, if it's like, you know, if, if I build an encounter where it's boring or it's over, it's, it's not fun because it's too hard or something like that, even that can feel very bad. Like that feels like a failure. And I think... I, uh, I, I, I guess I apologize to you and to everyone listening. I'm going to b try to be okay when there's a fluctuation in the goodness and badness of D&D sessions. And I apologize when we have ones that maybe aren't as fun or aren't as engaging. Um, but also, I'm just going to try to accept the fact that with the with the human condition or possibly my my uh, uh um you know persuasion towards a little bit more inconsistency in the creative process that some sessions are going to be like life-changing and some <laughs> sessions you're just going to be watching the clock to see when it ends and i apologize for the ones where you're watching the clock uh but i hope that you know um that I can be kind to myself and that uh, everybody else can be kind to me and themselves as well, because apparently that's just what happens. And uh, I'm just I'm just now at the age of 30, whatever I am. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea how old I am. 35, I think. Yeah, uh, no, 36. No, 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 35. No, no, no. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are 36 because I'm 33. No, I'm turning 33. Holy shit. Yes, I'm turning 33. <laughs> so you're 35 turning 36. Oh, my okay, God. Yeah. Okay. Me at the age of 35, I'm just now learning, starting the process of learning how to deal 
with failure in in aspects of life now and i mean that in in where i know i can excel failure in areas where i know i can excel i'm just i'm just, the way you just, worded that last sentence was like that, that infuriated me okay you're like i'm doing yeah. 35 and i'm just now knowing what failure go fuck off <laughs> <laughs> i know and that's i grew thing up is, with my mom calling me a failure regularly <laughs> oh. <laughs> no and then, i know how to it. fail I, I i can fail but failing at something that i can excel at and being unable to prove that i can excel at it like I'm like, oh yeah, I can make good music. And so I was like, okay, we'll make a good song. And then I can't for an extended <laughs> period of time. That's how it right. goes, man. That's tough, right? That's a tough pill to swallow. Like, when I'm like, look yeah. at these look at these five songs I've made, or look at these five great D&D sessions that I wrote. They're amazing. Everyone agrees these are amazing sessions of D&D. And so I was like, okay, write a great one right now. And I can't, I write 20 shitty sessions in a row because I'm unable to replicate it. And it feels like I've lost it and that I can never do it again, but that's not true. It's just the ebb and flow of that creativity. Kind well, of thing. And, and I just want to say, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to interrupt or anything, but I'm, gonna, I'm saying this and this doesn't necessarily need to be everybody else's opinion, but ge this is totally genuinely from the bottom of my heart, the genuine absolute truth, not even as your brother and not even as, you know, someone who doesn't want to knock your, your um, campaign or anything like that, but with my genuine, actual, personal opinion, I would say that that your uh, campaign has been the most unbelievably consistent I've ever been in in terms of enjoyability of session. I enjoy yeah. every single session, so uh, I I totally understand how you would just imagine that there's going to be some that are more enjoyable than others, and some are yeah. great, and some are so-so or whatever. That's absolutely not how I feel about it at all. I I have yeah. found there to be an unbelievable uh, consistency to episodes. So it's not like if you had a scale from zero to a hundred that some <clears> are a hundred and some are fifty-six. It's mm -hmm. like some are a hundred and some are ninety-seven. So there's, yeah. there's a three there's a three percent difference between between basically perfect and absolutely perfect, and I'm only saying that because I feel like I'd be considered unrealistic to say that all are 100 percent perfect. Yeah. That's the only yeah. reason I'm saying totally, totally giving yeah, that three yeah. oh, percent there. But just so you know, from the player's perspective, I yeah. know that your mind is going to do whatever it's going to do to itself in terms of like convincing you to worry about that. But from just from a player's perspective, your campaign has been, and I've been in a few now. Yours has been yeah. the most unbelievably consistent in terms of an enjoyability of every single episode every single one has felt like i'm learning something every single one has felt like we're doing something new and cool and moody, meeting new and cool characters so just from a player's perspective unbelievably consistent for how many episodes now 121 121 <laughs> fucking episodes man that's kind of what i wanted to point out <laughs> yeah, exactly. i was like we're still here after how many years yeah, like yeah. two yeah. fair yeah genuinely well, man, i mean yeah. like being totally you guys serious. too me like a couple months but anyway like, <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah but yep. like just you know i will shout it from the rooftops dude like yep. uh we're 121 episodes in like your players are here yeah loving waiting it. for the next chapter loving it and and people yeah and we freaking love it like yep. we are i i know i i said this to vanguard i'm actually upset that this is going to end soon <laughs> yeah i am yeah, really I know, upset right? i love the characters yep. like yeah and um but yeah cut yourself some slack yeah you know i think yeah exactly and i think what i'm doing right now is i think honestly part of it is is the nerves about it coming to an end sure and so i'm like setting up this giant safety net in case in case i completely fuck up the ending of the campaign mm. oh, oh sure game of thrones oh yeah that's so <laughs> yeah. <scary. laughs> i like i know that i have on my greatest days the capacity to end this campaign in the most satisfying way possible i have got i have got the end of the campaign all of the moving parts ready and i know how to do it in a way that is magnificent and satisfying but i worry with 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 this with this inconsistency that i'm starting to recognize in myself that i'm gonna hit a bad stretch right when it matters the most and that would be something that would be very hard to forgive myself for and so i think i'm just i'm just like i apologize if i fuck up the ending of this campaign 
I don't think I'm going to. I don't think you will either. Yeah, I don't yeah, think I'm anyway. going to. I have been planning and prepping for the end of this campaign for literally years. Yep. Changing it <laughs> and adapting it as the story changes and adapts. Um, but I'm just, just, I'm just putting that safety net out <laughs> that I apologize in case somehow I do trip it up and flub it up. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to try not to beat myself up too much about it because sometimes creativity and execution and consistency just doesn't happen. Yeah, it's, yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, no I, no I, worries I, whatsoever. Listen, whilst all these guys are going to, you know, blow smoke up your asshole, all right? Listen, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> hey, there, there has only ever been one episode ever in this entire thing where I just could not keep my focus. Do you know what episode that was? Uh, No. That was the one when I got way too high and I just couldn't focus. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. But Flynn was like, here, take this, sweetie. It's fine. Oh, don't eat the oh, whole thing. God. What are you doing, babe? Oh. And I was like, oh, shit. This is going to be a bad episode. And then Milton decided to do the thing where he kept telling you to shut the fuck up and build things, boys. And I just lost my goddamn shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> as, a, okay. as a side note, Tech, Wayward says, tell your brother from me he's easily one of the top dms i've ever seen i've been playing dnd for about 20 years the care he puts into every little detail is beyond amazing and you can see it in how well everyone receives it so well like i'd kill to even get a chance to play a side character in one of his stories my half sick ass is currently sitting in chat <laughs> oh, that's so nice. oh man thank you guys yeah, so much thank absolutely. you thank you so and no worries dude don't yeah. stress it at all i'm sure yeah. Yeah. we're together we're gonna craft something fucking awesome we're gonna wrap this up uh, yeah. in a way that you're gonna find totally satisfying i think so man i've yeah. got the the plans have been in motion since almost session one yep i have had the ending in mind constructed to as much as it can all the way along so this is it's not going to be a thrown together ending of whatever the hell happens i have been carefully crafting this story and allowing the way you change the world and you change the story to change the ending and so i i think it's going to be great but just just so that we all understand and i'm talking to myself more than anyone else <laughs> that as a human who has ups and downs uh that you know there may be a downswing so it's tough um, being a human it yeah. Is, man. Yeah. yeah what the hell we're, man we're, we're currently trying to pilot a fucking meatball that's powered by electricity <laughs> trapped inside a, exactly. a fucking bone cage <laughs> like you know yeah. we're not exactly dealing with uh, high-end robotics here we're dealing with a ball of fucking hamburger meat <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we can only do so much. <laughs> um, okay, awesome. Well, I don't know why I felt to, that now was the appropriate time to to discuss that revelation, but you know what? That's 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 the kind of go. night it is. There you go. Man. <laughs> <clears throat> so I think it's now time to dive in. So I will start by welcoming folks to our tabletop RPG stream called Monsters Ain't Real where we use the dungeon world rule set to enjoy some good old fashioned RPG fun set in an industrial horror universe. To anyone new, all the old episodes are up on YouTube and Spotify, but that doesn't mean that you can't just hang out and enjoy the session. First things first, we'll start with a little recap. Last time, you guys had just finished your ascension with Volos, and you had a couple questions for him, and at the end of it, he left you with a hint to investigate the financial district for dissidents and people who may seek to undermine the council's rule. You, upon leaving the building um, and explicitly searching for this type of person, you found someone named Six, who was scouting potential new ascendants to give them business opportunities at the cost of a cut of all future profits. Six informed you that the Holdman Back Bank would be uh, an ideal first goal. It would provide a huge amount of income and a foothold in the business world of Varna, which is the city that you're in. Uh, you began scouting the bank without first agreeing to the full deal yet. You gathered some preliminary info on it, and then you returned to Six and agreed to the full deal, although for a lower cut than uh, Six had initially been looking for. You gained some information about the people of interest uh, involved in the bank, as well as the layout of the security systems, but you didn't actually get any actual passcodes or bypasses or anything like that. You just know where the cameras are and the keypads are and stuff like that. 
And that's basically where we left off was you getting all that information from Six, which uh, Milton um, did put all into the clues section of Discord in case you forgot about any of them. That's right. And uh, that's basically where we'll pick up. We'll pick up in the room with Six after you just got that big old information dump and you'll be able to move on from there. But first, <clears throat> we will take a little trip on the narrative camera. <clears throat> The camera opens on a woman approaching a park bench. The streets around her are largely empty. One or two people shuffle about on the streets in the distance, but they seem uninterested in her. She pushes her long black hair behind her shoulders and then sits down on the dark green bench. She casually looks back and forth and buttons the top button on her long gray trench coat and settles into a comfortable position. Then she reaches behind the bench and pulls out a length of chain and leather. She ties the chain and leather around her ankles, then loops it around her legs and through the slats in the bench so that she cannot move her legs. She then very casually grabs an iron cuff that is already chained to the bench and clasps it around her left wrist pulling twice to ensure it is snugly fit on her wrist and firmly attached to the bench. She does the same with her right arm as the chains holding her arms allow for full range of movement while she sits, but would not permit her to run more than a foot or two away from the bench itself. And she pulls a leather restraining cap from her purse and attaches it to her head, fitting a jaw strap so tightly that her mouth is forced closed. She then sits there, entirely bound by chains, staring straight forwards. Calmly, but intently, she stares forwards. Her fists clench in anticipation as she stares forwards, eyes scanning back and forth. Then her pupils dilate, sweat beads on her forehead. Her focus becomes all-consuming. Her eyes find something and refuse to let it go. Her eyes slowly track back and forth, clearly following the movement of something. Then the pupils constrict so much that her eyes seem to be entirely comprised of the dark hazel brown iris. Her body slackens for a moment and every muscle tightens. Her arms pull hard on the chains, her legs squirm back and forth, and her head tries to turn side to side, but the restraints prevent her from moving. She fights with absolute terror in her eyes, no longer focused on anything, just awash with absolute fear and the desire to leave. But she can't. And she doesn't. And just as that realization hits her, the camera cuts to black. What? What? What the fuck? <laughs> and what we're back. Fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, what? So who was that? Who was that? That was character? super what? upsetting. What the fuck? Oh, what like, did she oh see? What was she looking at? Yeah. Oh my and God. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. So you guys are in the room with Six, who has their uh, aviator glasses back on, uh, and they had just told you all that information about the Holdman Back Bank. Everybody get the reference to Holdman Back? Is it because they hold men back? Is it Goldman Sachs? Yeah, that's uh -huh. the two. They, it's <laughs> the Goldman dude. Sachs, and uh, they hold men back. Got it. Okay. <laughs> but not women. No, nope, just they <laughs> Yeah, no, just men. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, but yeah, JK, just, JK. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, you already know how I feel sure. about your naming convention. I hate it. I know. <laughs> it's so good. It's so clever. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So you guys are sitting in the room with uh, six, and you just got all that information. Um, okay, and that, that was the, the information being the, the stuff that I wrote down? Yep, exactly, yep. You know that, you know, the uh, person that is the, 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 the bank teller that is Emmy. the weakest link is Emmy. You know that the Ascended, who kind of owns and runs the bank, is Jumbo Jumbo. And uh, you have the layout of everything. And you know about how Emmy would respond if they saw 
a, a human. Yep. And uh, I, you don't know how he would respond if he saw an ascended. Right. Yeah, we know that we're the same rank as uh, as Jimbo. Oh, Jumbo. that's Jimbo. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jimbo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, question for the party. Yeah. Mm. So we could go in there. Um, so, uh, uh, remind me again, why we are robbing the bank. Um, because we we need to we're robbing the bank because there's essentially somebody who's in charge of the bank that can be removed. Okay. We 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 essentially oh. asked we asked the guy if uh, if Volos had any enemies. Oh, that's or anybody right. That that he would like to be disposed of. Okay. And at the same time, if there's also any of those that are correlated with like positions, we could take over and gain some power ourselves. Sure. And this guy is the one that uh, overlaps. Um. Jimbo Jumbo. Uh, the, the, pff, the guy boy, that we're talking we name to. Him? Uh, you know how I am with names. The guy that we're talking <laughs> to or the leader of the bank? The leader of the bank. Yeah, that's Jimbo yeah. Jumbo. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So then what I was thinking is, um, you know, I think, well. Oh, sorry. One other thing is we can't be documented doing the heist because we want to swoop in and solve it so that we can then uh, kind of undermine this person yeah yes that makes sense um because uh oh oh sorry wait oh so we can't we can't be seen to be involved so are we are we thinking of uh getting people to do it for us yes yeah hiring aha uh, uh-huh. okay we're either gonna be we're either gonna hire somebody to do it for us or i uh i, I think i suggested you last time like you can disguise yourself as the guy that hired us to do this so we can have some leverage on him should things go south. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, but he also vehemently said that uh, even if we did try to do that, that he has enough, uh, his dick is big enough to swing to counter it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, He's and- holding an action for dick swinging. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so Volos, when you talk to him, You'd said, hey, do you have any people who are, you know, undermining you kind of like Grom was? Yeah. And he said, there's always people like that. And you said, can we, can you point us in the direction or can you tell us who and we'll go kill them? Sure. And he said that that would be like, that would prove nothing of your worth. So you should find the people. Sure. And he said to investigate the financial district. So then you talk to six. Yep. And when you mentioned people who would be rising up against Volos, um, he actually kind of avoided those questions a little bit. And I know instead, that's... Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, and instead told you guys about establishing a foothold first. And he told you about the bank. And that's the... Yeah, so that's why I'm a little bit worried that we're just kind of doing what this fucking six guy yeah. wants. Yeah, Not exactly. necessarily anything that's going to work for Volos, but what if we're being used by someone? Like, what if we are literally just pawns to this guy? Right, exactly. He's trying to find a way up and... He's essentially doing what we're doing. Like, you we're know. We're the hired, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're the hired people so it doesn't trace back to him. So, I mean, we could just go to the financial district and investigate ourselves, you know, but I have the same fears as uh, as Milton. Yeah. Maybe then, one. that is a good point. Maybe we can go to the financial district in general and do a kind of looking around day where we are both looking to see if there's someone who would be appropriate to hire to do the heist um, and also if there's a better target for us maybe we just do a reconnaissance day sorry run that by me one more time so rather than just jump jumping in and doing the heist right we, we could spend another day in the financial district in general where we both look for someone some a team who could do the heist on our behalf as well as if there's a better target for us to be uh taking down on behalf of volos well what if we this is this is a little bit uh this is a little bit more on the extreme end what if we did something like um that fucking 
what was that show that was on Netflix, that four-part miniseries about the dude who had the bomb strapped around his neck and was told to go rob a bank? And then, then they oh, fucking, wow. yeah, and then they detonated it. Yeah, that's it. Isn't that a true story? No, it's a it's a real thing. You see the real yeah. footage in the in the documentary. It's crazy. Yeah, we did not watch that. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's insane, man. Anyways, the point here being, why don't we do something like that to six? <laughs> what if we oh, sent God. him in? Because that oh, no. way, if he's trying to fuck with us, you know, we fuck with him. And if he's not, whoops. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't really have an answer for what That's happens true. if he's being genuine. I just <laughs> whoops, oops. <laughs> uh, well, but I mean, yeah. So what do we? How, how? What do we do now that we? I guess the question is, is how do we decipher whether or not if he's being genuine? Yeah, or that's not? that's the big yeah. one. Well, that's the big one. Hey, um, is there anything? Does anyone have any abilities for? Oh, I can eat some memories, oh, but you're the investigator. Do you have any investigation oh. abilities? Um. Uh, boy, I uh, yes, but I don't know how much. I, listen, yes, <laughs> I'm trying not to use all of my abilities nope. very regularly because they're pretty fucking game breaking, dude. I, Break I, it. I honestly yeah. want the game to grow around that. Like, nice. if you can, if you can crack open my mysteries with your abilities then you're gonna progress through some content quite quickly as i learn to work around those and other ways if you hit me with a really hard ability i'll 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 i will uh abide by the ability but if it's something you can just keep doing i might start limiting just how you know uh, right uh, right and, right. and that's really, what i mean like yeah. a lot of, my my a large portion of my abilities are okay you tell me everything now like that's that's a lot, and i'm like mm, i don't really want to use all that i I, mean, I'm, I think i'm okay with like using the ones that at least point us in the right direction i mean the thing is like the one is like you tell me what you want to know right yeah and what i will say is okay tell me what you want to know and then i will answer that question specifically Mm, okay cool so cool, uh, like cool, cool. you know we can work with it we could if it's a super overpowered ability like you just go ahead and use it um and uh a couple things to note first of all you know we're gonna get real specific on the numbers or like the the details mm -hmm. and second of all uh as was alluded to previously and tiger is aware of this now too as as a as a thought eater or mind eater what is it Knowledge eater. Knowledge eater. Knowledge yeah. eater. Yeah. As a knowledge eater, that information and Volos has said this too, information can be dangerous. So right. sometimes you might want to not know something for the possession of that knowledge can be dangerous. Yeah. So go ahead, use your super strong abilities. Know that if you know something that you shouldn't know, that could be bad. And second of all, we're going to get real specific about what you're asking about because you can't just say, okay, tell me what the campaign is because <laughs> the characters have no idea they're in a campaign. Gotcha. So they got to, they got to ask specifically what they're thinking of kind of thing. So please, by all means, if you guys have abilities to make your life easier, I have made this difficult. So use your things to make it easier. Let's go, Ben. Crack it open, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, kind of make this a little bit uh, more appropriate. Um, what my one of my skills is essentially uh, I know a guy. Um, that's that's one of my big skills. This is pretty much if I don't know the answer to something, I know who knows the answer, or I know how to acquire said thing because I know a guy. Yeah. Um, however, being that my guy is like absolutely brand new to this uh, arc and sort of stuff. Yeah. I I think my first course of action would be like hey, let's go out on the town. Let's go to the bars. Let's go to, let's go to meet some people. You know, let, let's let's see how the city functions as a whole. And then in doing that, maybe I could say like, oh, hey, I was I listened. I talked to a bunch of peeps. And then now I can actually say, I know a guy. Because right now I'm just kind of like shooting it out my ass. Yeah. I mean, luckily, you just met someone who prides themselves on being the single biggest information holder in the city. So you probably know the guy. Well, okay, so the question that I would want to ask next is, how do I find out any information on Six to find out whether or not he's genuine or not? Because he says, oh, I've helped out pretty much uh, anyone who's ever exited that building. It, how do I check his references? That's what, that's what be, that would be my question. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, like, I need to get information on the guy that knows everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's 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 a that's probably an excellent line of uh, questioning. 
So that would be my go-to at the moment is I want to uh, find out where that is, which is why I would want to spend like a night on the town and see if we can find out who these other Senate are that he supposedly helped or see if uh, he's used uh, robbers in the past or anything like that or find out if there's a, a grudge between Six and this guy and we're trying to fill a That's a great a idea. Grudge. That's yeah. A fun, okay, yeah. Where where do you think we should go? Like a, like a, a place where like corporate types go to drink their sorrows away? Yeah, what do you, you think? Know, like we a could. super fancy lounge yeah, type thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Last Deal, exactly. Because I do have uh, many uh, bougie abilities as the charlatan. I'm basically designed to bamboozle oh, corporate you, shills, you know? And You two would be the both quite of us, exactly. the fucking synergy in a place like yeah. that. Yeah, but this could literally be our calling, this like uh, Ocean's Eleven type moment. Oh, our ability yeah. to work in tandem to just truly bamboozle and extract information from people totally unsuspecting or fuck it up in such spectacular fashion that we risk a TPK. One of the two. <laughs> Either way, sounds good to me. Yeah. Let's do it. yeah, I like it. <laughs> Back in the financial district, some bar over there, some, some club. I, I think that would make sense because I bet people are probably the type where as soon as the clock strikes 9, yeah. 9 p.m. or whenever they're allowed to leave work, they probably want to head somewhere and get a drink right away. And I bet there's some some shitty overpriced lounge with $19 martinis pretty centralized in the financial district. What, what, what does that look like, Tech? Um, I mean, so, uh, okay, you guys you guys did take a bus around the, the financial district. Sure. So you probably got a little bit of a look at, at the places that exist there. Um, you saw uh, quite a number of really shitty, crummy bars, um, broken glass windows, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, doors off their hinges, really, really rough looking bodyguards kind of uh, bouncing people from, from the front doors. Uh, you saw broken glass, you saw, you saw um, all manner of, of refuse on on the street kind of thing like you've seen the rough places sure um why don't uh why doesn't everyone roll plus intelligence to see if they can recall having seen a place that might be a little bit more you know high-end i think that uh the place a place we would want what's intelligence here a place we would want is uh not seen not seeable from the street kind of thing <laughs> Like in a, uh, that, a yeah, that's why I'm asking building. for the role. Yeah, oh, you gotta walk through somebody's kitchen start. or something. This not is not why my start. character's broken. Tech, do you remember? My guy remembers absolutely everything with uncanny precision. Oh, sh um, I don't need to roll for memory rolls. Oh, that's right. I guess that's a good yep. point. Okay. Shit. No, this, these are the good things. These are the good things. <laughs> because, because uh, surprise, surprise, your whole team just rolled like dog shit. Yep, yep. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you You're know gonna... what? I'll roll just, just so I can just just so I can feel included, okay? Yeah. Just for yeah. flavor, yeah. Just, just for, for flavor. flavor. Yeah, you know, okay. I'm oh, my God, remember. dude. That's oh, kind of nice. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait, never mind. I can't forget. I'm a genius. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, wow, dude, those are some bad wow, rolls, guys. this is not great, dude. Yeah, get them all the way yeah. now. Okay, we're getting them all up. Yeah. Early. No, this is yeah. why it's so good to use these abilities, right? Because you would, you'd be spinning your wheels for a bit, having a tough time finding these places. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, so, you know, all you guys can remember, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, Tiger, Rippy, and Sebastian, all you guys can remember are all the shitty ones. You did not see a single place that you think an Ascended or a CEO or anyone like that would ever step foot into. But um, Bishop, with your kind of identic uh, 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 filing cabinet of a memory, you absolutely remember as you were driving along, you were just keeping your eyes open, letting everything wash over you. You do remember seeing a couple of um, like lit up windows in uh, hotels that very much appeared like they were not for um, staying in. They were not for people to stay in. And you suspect that they were some sort of activities, whether they were... Poker, um, a poker hall or something. Exactly, poker gotcha. or jazz okay. lounge okay. or something like that. They seemed like they were reserved and decorated in such a way that it was a place for people to gather. Um, but they were kind of in the middle floors of large hotel buildings 
that um, had a pretty strict security and uh, like uh, uh, entry lists kind of thing to get into. So you can identify a couple of these places. Um, why don't I go ahead and look up a name of one of them? Fantasy name <laughs> generator. <laughs> um, let's see. So you, one skills. thing that you really oh, remember um, was a um, one place that really stuck out because it was just so over the top. Iconically named. Iconically named Sparkle. <laughs> That does sound very fancy. That does sound. <laughs> that does sound like the rich, smarmy kind of. You know, I would like to think that that's what the name of the building was, and then I remember it was named something else. You think it was called Sparkle? You remember thing, and then you remember that was actually the uh, gift shop name that was on the exit of the place, ah. and the place you actually were going were remembering was called Luminos. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah that ticket. sounds familiar. I do now. a slow clap staring directly at the GM. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so yeah, you remember a very fancy place called Luminos. I'm 100% stopping my sparkle, though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we can get one of those novelty, really large lollipops. We need those, I think. Yeah. We would have that for sure. <laughs> So I think we should do something that, uh, I mean, this is up to text discretion, obviously. I think we should do something uh, to to prepare ourselves to fit in Ocean's Eleven style and like roll to see how convincingly we can assemble an outfit. Outfit like, montage? Yeah, like mm. uh, right, how, how, montage how, how likely are we to fit in versus how much are people gonna be like, what the fuck are they wearing? Yeah, okay, okay. I think because so this is absolutely necessary. So you guys are still technically in the room with six. Yeah, sure. As you're kind of like thinking about this yeah. and, and talking about this and in hushed tones, I'll say six is not really on to you guys yet, but you'll probably want to move out of the building uh, when you start talking about specifics of what you're doing. Sure. Especially because oh, yeah. you're investigating six. So sure. you're like, <laughs> So this guy's obviously full of shit. Let's go talk to people who might know him. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so uh, uh, you remember that Luminos definitely catered to the successful. Being ascended makes you successful, but does not guarantee you entrance into a place like this. There's a lot of middle management or CEOs of smaller companies who would never make it into Luminos. Interesting. So um, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to put together quite an outfit. Maybe we need to be from another town. That's why they haven't heard of us. But anyway, outfit first. Sorry. So, um, uh, what would you guys like to do? So, yeah. So, I think I think uh, I would like to basically leave where we are now, head into the financial district, and go into like the the uh, rich, fancy, uh, uh, <clears throat> like tailor part of town. Yep. and find a place to get uh, a very flashy suit, very obviously only intended to be used in pretty special occasions because uh, Rippy has a suit that he normally wears anyway. So something akin to what the uh, Dumb and Dumber are wearing when they go to the party, the, bl the, the blue and the orange. Something, something exceptionally like vivid and really dramatic and yep. very occasion, uh, very occasion made. Yeah, okay, okay. I want to look like I'm from the fucking Hunger Games. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go feathers and shit. You want to be all, all yeah, all, all ripped to shreds and covered in mud? Yeah. There it's it like, is, Dad. That's what nice. I was going to say. No, not that. No, not that. <laughs> 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 the good guys. <laughs> the good guys. Wait, hold on. Guys. <laughs> the good guys. <laughs> you know, the good guys who, who, who dramatically lose at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Sudden twist of unfair um, fate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's where uh, I like okay. to go. Uh, okay, so you guys uh, leave, leave uh, Six's uh, uh, house, and uh, once again on your way out, you kind of hear that uh, uh, kind of banging sound in the living room, and you hear a voice kind of exclaim uh, and shout some words, and then the banging stops, and you guys leave the, the, the house <clears throat> and uh, start heading towards the financial district. And at this point, it is now late at night. Can I ask, um, sorry, before we get too far yeah. into it, did the voice, we couldn't hear what the voice said. 
Yeah. Is there any kind of distinguishing accent uh, or anything like that? Any man any... or woman or obviously sure, presenting yeah. either way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Tiger, go ahead and roll plus wisdom. See if you can kind of perceive any details about the voice. Oh, that's better. Okay, a 10, that's a full success. Um, it sounded uh, quite masculine. Uh, it sounded uh, quite forceful. The words you were not able to to gather, um, but it sounded like the, the person was probably on the older side. Okay, thank you. Yep. Probably, you know, pat over over the hump, the on on the downward slope. Okay. Kind of yeah. As soon as we're out of the earshot kind of thing out of the house, I would yeah. tell that to the party. Okay. Did you notice that uh you know that? Yeah. yeah. Um Okay. And uh you guys then make your way to the financial district. And it is late at night now. Okay. It, is, it is just full dark, pitch blackout, probably 11 p.m., maybe close to midnight kind of thing. Were you saying and that, should we get a room at that hotel maybe then? Or we want to get clothes right now. With what money? I was worried about money. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. I was wondering about the same thing. Well, because we're ascended, I imagine there'd be like, you know, like, don't worry about it. Like, like a credit thing or like a loan thing. I don't know. But like, you know, like a tab, essentially. I don't know if there's something like that. I guess we could figure it out. Mm. Yeah, good question. Okay, so I have a, I have a quick question for the DM. Uh, when it comes to ascended and normal humans, uh, mm -hmm. is there any sort of status quo? We're not supposed to touch ascended, but what about humans? We are they are they just straight cattle, or do we have to respect the the the, the fucking the lobies? <laughs> They're basically cattle. They're basically cattle. So I can be like, give me your fucking money, and there's and I would not get in trouble for that. Uh, I mean, you might get in trouble if, if an ascended, if that person works at another ascended company right, and right, right. you damage them in such a way that they fail to do their job, they'll probably be killed for failing to do their job well, but not before giving up your, your looks kind of thing. Gotcha. So, you know, you run a little bit of a risk of, of angering another ascended if you, if you inadvertently fuck over another ascended but people are are basically just cattle and if anything it is looked poorly upon to uh to harass them unduly because it's kind of like it's below you a little bit gotcha okay, um, okay. but Good not enough. actually any trouble like you would not actually get in any trouble for just grab, finding someone and be like give me your money and they give you they give you their money like that's you you have not actually broken any laws or any rules by doing that okay next question do yeah. pawn shops pawn shops exist here <clears throat> uh yeah sure i mean hey it's it's the red ink man there's probably some super unethical pawn shops around here <laughs> all right in that case all we got to do is find something to hawk you know what i mean <laughs> well that's that's exactly what i'm good at i'm good at selling useless items Oh, perfect. Maybe oh. that's the way to go. And so the idea with that is what to, to bamboozle a person <laughs> with snake oil, basically. For so. to, to, to get some money to it, to afford entrance into the club and, and, and to get the their clothes. clothes. Yeah. OK, yeah, that's a great idea. Well, that's yeah. Let's see, because my ability uh, con artist, whenever you attempt to sell a useless item, <laughs> roll a uh, uh, roll plus charisma. If you roll a 10 plus, you're successful and you gain plus one forward to the next move taken to deceive the same target on a seven to nine. You're still successful, but the GM will tell you that one of the following has happened. And then tech gets to pick between your lie leads to another, which requires a new roll, suspicion <laughs> or unwanted attention. So we can we can find something that we can try to hawk, and then we can do the paperclip thing where we start with something, try to sell it for something bigger, take that and try to sell that for something bigger, take that and try to sell that for enough money to pay for everything if we want. Yeah, I like it. Maybe find something on the, some do some dumpster dive ah. in and see if we can find like a piece of furniture or a lamp ah. or something, a vase that maybe we could pretend is a antique or something like I that. I bet you there's some of these places that just dump all their excess stuff that they don't want to justify 
uh, you know, giving away so they would rather throw it in the garbage but are still in perfect condition. That sounds like something yeah. they would do in the Red Ink, you know? Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do love that you guys are basically monster demigods and your first thing is going to be to go dumpster diving. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, I guess we could, we're, we are ascended, we could probably just walk down the street and look at people and be like, give me money, give me your money right now. And they would probably, I imagine they probably would. I can't imagine That's they what would. I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, Texas is like, you know, we might get, in, if, if we if we offend the wrong subordinate. Sure. Yeah. We get in trouble. Yeah. <sighs> Tough one, man. Tough one. And just so you know, uh, if you run afoul of an Ascended and they get permission to, like, attack you, yeah. you will be informed that you you have been marked. Kind of thing. <laughs> PvP so, okay. flag is enabled. <laughs> okay. That's basically exactly what you get. You would be informed that your PvP flag is now enabled kind of Fuck. thing. So it's not, it wouldn't just happen, you would be informed. Okay. I also like that we haven't this whole time, this whole campaign, we haven't cared about money. Like money hasn't been a thing, and I love that it's now a thing in the red. In the red, like that yeah. exactly. Very yeah, appropriate. that's very that's appropriate. appropriate. Very that's one of our struggles. A lot here. Yep, yep. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yep. So, we need the suits, and then we need money for the suits. So we're just trying to think of uh, how to get that money right now. Um, we need, yeah, we need, we need to, we need outfits and possibly the cost of admission. Uh, and we're, so we're looking for something to sell in order to afford that, that, uh, admission. And we're trying to find a way to do it that won't fuck us over because we're running afoul of someone that we really don't want to. Yeah. Can, hey, G GM, if we yeah. all check our pockets, is there anything awesome in there? <laughs> <laughs> Um, probably some sand from walking in the desert. Maybe a couple branches from your trek. <gasps> Wait, forest. I have what's his face's staff. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! Oh my oh. god! Yeah. You, you fucking did say genius! That. Yeah. So what? It, what was? What is the significance of his staff? Is this? We never went over it. it. It was. It was homeboy's staff that he used to like. You know, I have all the power. I was originally going to pick it up because I like wanted to use it like as a weapon. Because Bishop is fucking useless in combat. <laughs> um, but if I can sell this, uh, can I? Can I? Can I? Uh, I'll wait till we leave. I don't know if you've left or not yet. You've left. You've left the house. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, can I do anything? Like, can I? Can I investigate this to see if this is something that would benefit me in in a combat sense at all? Because if not, I will fucking sell it immediately. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can go ahead and roll plus intelligence to investigate it. Or if you have an ability to to investigate in some way, you could use uh, that. Da, 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 da. Investigate is make inquiries about a subject, not about an item. Ah, gotcha. Um, so I don't really think that counts. And let me check my other thing in Maduba. I haven't gotten it anyway. Okay, so just intelligence. Okay, yep, yep. Roll plus intelligence. Yeah. Which would be guile. <laughs> <laughs> nine oh a nine okay that's a very high mixed success uh so i would say as you look at this staff it's very much like a like a very raw branch uh it has not been worked very well it does seem to have grown in a unique shape kind of thing but nothing really out of the ordinary just just a neat branch basically uh as you're looking over it um you can see that it's been smoothed quite a bit from from being used so much uh, it's got a couple scorch marks on it where, you know, magic has probably been detonated a bit too close to it and stuff like that. Uh, it does seem to have some sort of uh, character to it. Like, the grain all goes a certain way. And the the twists in the wood seem to be uniform. And so mm -hmm. there is something about it that is different but you nothing really jumps out as oh this is worth a bunch of money or oh this does something something it does seem unique in some way but uh the specifics of it are are kind of eluding you 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 are getting a little bit of a of a oh this is something but you don't know what 
Gotcha. Um, I, I don't know if I can assist him because I'm more magically inclined than most, but like, yeah, I don't know how that would like, extend. absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't resist. I'd be, I wouldn't be like, you know, Schmeagle trying to look at this in the corner. I'd be openly like, hmm, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, wisdom or intelligence? Uh, intelligence. All right. Never mind. Okay, yeah. No, that's good. A mixed success. I think between the two mixed success, because basically the thing with Bishop Kane is that he's not used to seeing actual magical artifacts, right? He's Correct. very much from a, a a mundane world with mundane objects. Magic is 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 very new to him. Uh, whereas you, Sebastian, have seen uh, quite a fair share of magic and like held magic. And I think as you're looking over this staff, you do notice the the standards of like what makes a magic staff in its rawest, most unworked form. This is just like some, he picked up a, a stick and happened to pick up one that was quite good at channeling magic. It's not perfected in any way. It, you can tell that Grom got lucky with this stick. He didn't actually craft it, but this stick, this cane, absolutely can um, channel magic in in kind of uh, 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 semi amplifying and directed ways. It's a focus. It's very much a focus and not a great one, but it is a focus. Hmm. So I guess as Sebastian goes over, he's like, hmm, what you looking at? Um, a stick. Can I? Mm, mm. No, it's mine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You can take go ahead. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. Oh, okay. I'm going to put my hand on it now. All right, that's what she said. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Readers. Wood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, well, it looks like this guy tried to make a. No, he actually. It's there is stable. no way he found this. No, this is a this is a focus. Like, I don't. Uh, uh, so in, in magic terms, just um, continued those a long time ago. When the hell did Fold go out of business? <laughs> what? What's a fu? What? Never mind. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, so this, uh, so for magic people, they use this kind of like a lens to gather their magic and use it. Okay. <laughs> so in in this this might be worth something uh well i what could try to make it better maybe could you make it do something fancy uh, like shoot sparks out of the end of it when we wave it around uh or put an illusion on it to make it seem even yeah. nicer i will put an illusion on it to make it look even more special uh, I, have a, I have a spell for that, and I'm going to use I have a spell for that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so the bedazzle spell. Okay, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna pull up the because your spell descriptions are like paragraphs long. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like holy shit. Okay, failed arcanist. <clears throat> um, let me pull this up. Uh, that is. Um, what's the spell called? Uh, I know a spell. It's at the bottom. I know a spell. Right Aha, column. here we go. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking 20 pages long. Um, <laughs> oh, there's a preamble. You... What the hell? Didn't see that before. <laughs> and a, refer to Appendix C? Oh, God. Uh, okay. Whenever you want to create any magical effect, describe to the GM what you want your spell to achieve. God, that's so <laughs> wide open. They will tell you the cost, risk, or consequence of your spell if it's successfully cast. Um, roll plus int, 10 plus, uh, even with only partial memory of how to cast it, you, the spell, you cast the spell at the cost, risk, or consequence that the GM named, and you get the desired effect. Seven to nine, you manage to wrangle enough details from your memory on how to cast the spell, and you create the desired effect. You also suffer the cost, risk, or consequence that the GM named. However, in addition, the GM will tell you of a secondary magical effect 
uh, you cause as you used details of how to cast other spells to fill gaps in your memory. Uh, and then six, describe the additional magical effect uh, to the first you wanted. You achieve both, but the GM will only tell you how terribly wrong it goes in addition to whatever else they say. Okay. <laughs> Boy, that's quite the ability. Okay, uh, so you're using I know a spell. Yeah. Let's start with roll plus int, and we'll deal with what the result is. <laughs> After uh, we see what, what what the roll is. Okay. All right. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Oh yeah. Hey. Oh, hey. Yes. Ten yes. plus. Wow. Uh, you cast the spell at the cost, risk, or consequence that the GM named, and you get the desired effect. Okay. So you all you have to do is pay the cost or risk or consequence. So why don't you tell me what the ability is? What 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 is the spell that you are trying to cast on this? It could be apparently fucking anything you want. Like so. I get that ability. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think to kind of like. I think kind of like Sebastian would be a little cautious because he's not quite sure how his magic works in this place yet. Yeah. Um, so I think he would try to make it look like a final product, but not with like embellishments, like gems and jewels and, and you know, stuff like that and filigree and whatever. Mm -hmm. But maybe like the carvings on it are a little more pronounced. Like, you know, like, like, it, like the, essentially this feels like a, the stick and correct me if I'm wrong. The stick feels like it's like kind of like they sketched out what they wanted to do and started kind of to work on it. This, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, largely this thing is is almost raw, picked up off the ground. It's it's almost not worked at all. Okay. Yeah. So I would say he would try to go one step above that. Okay. Um, not not like if if there was like five steps, this would be step two or three you know of that gotcha. process okay okay and i guess the question is are you changing the staff itself or are you pushing putting an illusion on it mm. see without knowing what the cost or consequence would be that's hard to choose uh, um okay okay um yeah no i i think i think i'll have to know uh, I'm not going to make it too big. I'm not going to make the cost or consequence too big because you're not shooting for a, an amazing, amazing final product. Uh, maybe. Okay. So, yes, I would say that he's actually physically altering it, as in, like, maybe there's a little carvings in it to kind of help channel things a little more. Yeah. You know, like he knows he has a general idea of how magic works. So he's essentially trying to make at least in this step of the staff, make it more efficient in channeling magic. Yeah. Okay. Um, then I would say that the consequence is that the staff becomes very fragile. So oh. you, you, you apply this magic to it, but because the spell isn't perfect and the staff wasn't perfect to work to, to start with, and you're not used to the magic here, that as you change the staff, you see the carvings etch themselves in there. You see the twists in the wood become more uniform and worked. You see the grain polished a little bit more. It is not a perfect staff. This is not uh, an amazing focus, but it is significantly more work than it used to be. However, as you're kind of like turning it in your hand, the, the balance between your left and right hand as you're holding this stick, you kind of feel it kind of creak in the middle a little bit, and you realize that this thing has become like brittle glass. Okay, so it's not gonna, like if I handle it normally, it's not gonna break, but if there's like a shock to it, it's just probably gonna shatter. Yeah, like, yeah, if, if you just hold it, it's fine. But if you were to like shake it, it'd probably break apart and, and shatter. Okay. It's quite brittle. Okay. Yeah. So this has already happened to it? Yeah, uh, it, it, it is now a, like it is now a, a significantly more polished and effective focus, but it is it is now quite delicate. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, hmm. I guess Sebastian holds. It's like I think 
This would get us some money, but uh, uh, it's more of a piece of art than an actual focus. But, you know, more money than cents. Someone will probably pay for it. Yeah. Thanks for making it, you know, not as good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was not oh, it's so fancy before, now. <laughs> and now it's... Um, Great. Now we can say, hey, this will keep you company for at least two weeks before just, you break it. Uh, I mean, no, no, no. Uh, I'm not saying we're disappointed. I'm just saying you could have done better. Could have done a yeah, bit better. I, I, yeah, I mean, I dropped out of college. What do you want? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice. It, very just, it was a personal choice. It just wasn't for me. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, now, Miss <laughs> uh, uh, Pussycat. Oh, let yes. you Miss oh. Pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> you eat books and stuff, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you Favorite might, snack. You like to go to the buffet at the uh, library? Yes, hey. please. Okay, love. Well, what could you tell us in terms of history, so as we can sell this as a, some sort of artifact, eh? Well, what we could do, and can I bring in some uh, legends or something from my? from the green ink maybe to just lay some mystique on top of it oh yeah that's a good point maybe that's not a good what? idea what? maybe i'll suggest in character you know what i could we could do is lay some legends from my home dimension on it ah, okay like what let's see if there's any good ones or are they all boring stuff like once upon a time there was a magical ball of yarn and all the kitties played with it um, uh, madam, know, Pussy 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 Pussy. lady, yes, uh, Sebastian, isn't that kind of a bad idea? Seeing that that guy, and he points back to the building, kind of knows the history of most of these dimensions. Oh, ah, true. true, very good point. Haven't would you be a giveaway. Any, have you eaten any books here? What happens when you go into a library anyway? What do you do? Do you what do you do to the books? Well, I, uh, I'm a real voracious reader. Okay. I eat, I eat the books. I eat them you eat with the my books mouth. With yes. your mouth. Okay. Like, I think there's a, like, actual description of a librarian plundering the local library. Oh. Oh. Okay. So, if you want something to eat, you don't go to a restaurant. You go to the library yeah. and just... I need both saying? things. It's really the knowledge feeds my brain. How likely? While tuna feeds my tummy. How, how likely do you think they'd be to notice if you were eating the books? Do you think anybody here really reads? I can't imagine. Well, it might be worth giving it a try, you know? See, and then per get uh, perhaps we should go to the local library and form a circle around Miss Kitty Ears. Wow, she's eating a book! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? We can go to the anthropology section and form a little blockade while she eats a book! <laughs> what do you think, team? I don't know what that's... I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Fine, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Great choice. What do you say, Sebastian? Uh, uh, fuck it. Lead right the way. Okay. What if we just? What if we just take themes? All we want to do is sell this staff. Maybe yeah. we take just themes from legends, and lay it over like a nice gauze, and pass uh, it along. Perhaps it doesn't need to be verifiably something from from here. Do you have a way to do that without incriminalizing us? <laughs> Well, <laughs> that is not exactly encouraging mm. when you answer a question with such a tone mm. and inflection. Mm. Well, you know, I guess it remains to be seen if it will be incriminating. Oh, lovely. Okay. Well, <laughs> what does everybody else think? Rippy's not so good with the history. Sebastian, in your experience purchasing magical items, what's, mm -hmm. what makes 
the value go up? What is the real value maker? Uh, well, functionality for one, like the more it can do and the more kind of insane things it can do, uh, the price tends to go up uh, quite a bit. Uh, the other thing would be like if it was associated historically with something like like maybe this was you know, uh, the staff of an angel and it was made brittle because of a great war where they expended all their power. Sure. Something like that. Something crazy like that. Do we know if it's legal to bring things into the bubble from outside of it? Is there anything wrong with it being from out there? Uh... Do, do you think anyone would be, do you think it would drive people away if they knew it was from out there? Or would they think it's a mysterious artifact? Uh, Sebastian opens up his black book. It's like, uh, and basically he's looking to see if that's a thing. Yeah. Do people like to collect things from outside of the bubble? Or are they like the forbidden flower from that M. Night Shambalamps movie? <laughs> Shambalamps? M. Night Shambalamps. Whoa, black Betty Shambalamps. Okay. I would say, um, so the black book probably doesn't have too much on the information of, of artifacts and stuff like that. Uh, but I would say given your, uh, um, perusing of, uh, being around the cities, being around the townships, seeing the kinds of buildings, just as you've been passing by them and the couple that you've gone to that sale of magical artifacts is quite uncommon. Oh, and sale of uh shit from outside the city is uh very much the forbidden fruit oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh -oh. do we know if there's like any equivalent of like a like a a, a dark net in this in this ink um a dark net <laughs> Uh, I mean, you would assume that it definitely, you would exist. You would think that everything black market, dark web, all, all the, all the, uh, backdoor trading and stuff like that, it all exists here somewhere. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is there, I guess kind of just looking over it, is there any way that this would pass as kind of like a, a piece of art, like abstract art or a sculpture or something like that? I would say with what you've done to it, it could pass for either function or art. Like this, like this thing is now a, a significantly more powerful focus. Interesting. Um, so it could absolutely function as a focus as long as, you know, care was taken. Um, but it's all honestly um, finely made enough now that it could absolutely be a piece of art. Uh, I'd say, okay, hold on. character. Uh, if we had an angle, maybe if we especially want to get with those snobby folk, maybe we try to pass this off as a sculpture or something, you know, like well, th those types of people love stupid, worthless things like that. Well, yes. surely, surely, you know, a spell to make this thing strangely attractive, eh? Strangely desirable. Oh, you're dipping in. I don't know how much more this thing can take. Uh, why not just go to a pawn shop and sell it and say it belonged to a very illustrious. You know what? Why don't we just tell them what it is? Why don't we say this was used it was, by, yes. the staff by the last person that dared to try to shatter the realm that protects this great town? Oh, it's not a bad idea. It's not mm. a bad idea. Besides which, if we got caught and got sent up to speak to Volos, we would just look like fucking idiots, eh? Not a big deal. Nothing wrong. <laughs> if we just said, no worries, we're busy just being fucking stupid rather than doing what you asked. Not so bad. Not exactly trying to undermine him. Oh, um, question for the DM. Yeah. Since I crafted this or I made this better within city limits, would that count as me creating it within city limits? Like, um, it was I was just given the base, but I actually work the wood within city limits. Yeah, absolutely. Why? Was, What's uh, up? No, I, I was wondering if this like would this become not a so uh, not so much a forbidden fruit anymore. Oh, um, I definitely, definitely. You know, if people were to know that you had worked it, it would be much less forbidden fruit. This would be much less 
of that uh, of that kind of outside exotic and much more of a of a magical item that is still desirable but is not like original technically if they knew mm. okay. okay if we don't if we don't tell them we could say it's brittle because of the you know fight that the previous owner went through mm. true 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 okay uh, mm. That's very true. Okay, I have an angle in my head. You know, dump it yeah, uh, or, or, or say yes to it. What, what do you feel? Uh, uh, I'm an I'm an up and coming artist. You are my managers. Okay. And uh, this is probably one of my better works, and I'm looking to offload <gasps> it to someone. Brilliant. And that would get us into the lounge oh. because all the fancy people definitely want crap like this. And you can brilliant. mingle and get whatever info you want while oh. trying to sell this thing to them. Brilliant idea. I could even pretend to be some schmuckety schmuck manager of yours who's spoken to them before. I could just say something like, we're here for our art viewing that we set up weeks ago. I'm pretty good with the word that way. And just, just to kind of keep things, because talking's not my best suit. Um, maybe uh, let's come up with something like um, I don't maybe speak I. To him. It's, you're going to interrupt his creative process. Oh, I like that. Let's hey, go with that. I like what that. What do you think? Don't talk to him. He, he sworn an oath of silence for 30 years. What a, what a talented artist he is. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, that, that, that's my proposal. It's up to you guys. Love it. I'm, I'm always the end. Love it. Uh, yes, I like it. I like the idea that uh, we booked something previously, yeah. and so they're, they should be expecting us, and if they don't have it on the list, it's their fault. Now, there's one important question for you. What? Mm -hmm. What is your artist name? What should I refer to you as? Oh. Mm. Something really good. Something yeah. really, really good. Something yeah, really inspiring, like yeah. Spanksy or something. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be also. It can't. There can't be a last name. It has to be like a symbol yeah. or just like a one-syllable name. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm. Oh, that's hard. That's hard. Uh, no, it's easy. Just think of just just think of something like that that seems illustrious but actually makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Like, Life. Exactly. Precisely. Yeah, and your name be uh, Lamp. <laughs> Cer Ceruli Cerulean something. Uh, yeah, it could just be a color. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it could How just about... be Azure. Uh, let's go with. Uh... Oh, that's not too bad. Uh. Actually, yeah, I like that. Azure. Let's go with that. Oh, I was thinking of uh. Oh, just the name uh. Oh, just the. Uh. Oh. Oh, uh, I do. Oh, uh, <laughs> as he named uh, because when you see something, you're either gonna go uh, or you're gonna go. Or, uh, he, uh, he wouldn't have bothered oh, to write like, down. Let's uh, go with that. I love said that. It. <laughs> he wouldn't have written it down. He would have just said it. He would have just said uh. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Okay, so I like that. Let's go with uh, but I'm gonna have to keep track of when someone says um uh, because I'm gonna have to turn. Like someone's calling to oh, me. Yeah, true. Oh, I like that. <laughs> it's very good. This is gonna be great. And or or maybe we even like meld that into the whole like don't talk to him thing because now you're distracting him. You keep calling his name. Oh, Stop. Yeah. Oh, great idea. Great idea. Okay. And we're all various forms of his uh, talent management. Make a title for yourself. I could be a bodyguard, maybe. Great idea. Great uh, idea. Who wants to be my? PR, I'll I guess. Be PR. Wait, no, maybe that's one for Mr. Kane. After all, um, he's the one with the forward face, and, you know. And uh, Rippy's just gesturing at his face in general, and then just gesturing <laughs> at Bishop's uh -huh. face and feeling like he's not really making his point. He's now standing beside Bishop Kane and just uh -huh. making small circles uh -huh. around his face with his finger. You know, uh -huh. he's got uh -huh. one of these that you want to talk to. Oh, you, you have a face these. too. We both have. We both yeah, have faces. That's the one. That's what Rippy said. I said. I mean, hey. Okay. Great. Right. Oh, off okay. we go. All right. you're, you're, you're doing it again. You're just okay. gonna you're just gonna have sentence talk over me yeah. every single fucking time. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, sure, I can be your. What, what, what did you want me to be? The publicist and the media uh, manager? Public what, what relations. Am I exactly? Public what, relations. What? Public relations. Oh, public relations. Sorry, right. you're being so public quiet. Relations. I mean, you're like a mouse. <laughs> public relations. I can barely hear you. You're like a fucking mouse. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Love it. Okay. 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 Uh, what about you, Sebastian? Um, <clears throat> I mean, do I need a title necessarily? Oh, well, no, never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, what should I be then? Um, my, my maybe my, my manager. Ah, like, I have a PR manager. I have a manager idea. manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great idea. Okay. Love it. Love it. Dude. So straight to the club or to some clothier first? No. Although there's probably nobody open now. True. There's probably nobody open right now. Uh, can I, can, uh, boy, can I do any research into th this place? Okay, this place seems to, I'm, this place just seems to be the fucking worst. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming like Twitter exists here. Oh my God, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, absolutely. If I'm, if I'm going to be a social media manager, I'm going to immediately like try to, I don't have a cell phone or anything like that, but I'm going to steal somebody's on the, on the fucking sidewalk and I'm immediately start making accounts uh, oh, for the, for uh, yeah. And because otherwise I'll be like, I've never heard of you. And I'll be like, yeah, well, why not? All his social media stuff is right. We just set him up um yeah i mean yeah do you want to take a phone from somebody on the street uh i mean do it boy i don't know i'm scared of like inter uh, hurting somebody subordinate now oh, well, uh, well why don't you let me try to pickpocket i literally have a oh uh, yeah there um, we go okay yeah. i like that one do that one yeah i mean i guess it depends on whether or not the gm thinks that uh i think this one would take into account the spell the spell is called sleight of hand and it doesn't say yeah. when you steal something, but it says when you conceal a small object from view. And I think I could conceal a small object from someone's person from view. Yeah, I mean, basically sleight of hand and pickpocketing, that basically all exists. Um, is it plus dexterity? Uh, it sure is. Yep, yep, that's, that's basically, that's definitely the role. Sure, okay. Um, yeah, so I think I think I would like to think that I get a plus two on this anyways, but I would also like to just think that this is something that this is one of the things that Rippy is good at. This is what he did: bump into people on oh, the street, yeah. dust himself off, and meanwhile he's pickpocketed their their pocket watch or something. So, oh, uh, yeah. I would like to first sort of look around the street for someone who looks like sort of bougie um, uh, Hunger Games you know, elite walking a little froofy poodle or some shit like that and plan to to intercept their path and stumble into them. Rippy, uh, yeah. do you want any assistance? Do you want someone making a distraction or do you prefer to work alone? Oh, not a bit. How about this? Uh, if I, uh, if I bump into him and then they walk away pretty quickly, I'm good. If it looks like we're even having this tiny bit of a conversation, that's an alarm bell. I need to help immediately. <laughs> <laughs> if I need help immediately, why don't you come up and start hissing at me or something like that, talking about a previous uh, uh, business engagement gone wrong or something like that to make it more dramatic so that the person I bumped into simply wants to leave and get away. Absolutely. I'm on it. Okay. Um, okay, so, so far, yep. uh, you guys have left uh, Six's house. Yep. Uh, would you like to travel to the financial district? I think that's going to make the most sense. Yeah. Um, so you guys hop on a bus. Buses are still running. Uh, definitely fewer and fewer people on board them at this time of night. Uh, and you get off in the financial district. And here again, you know, uh, it's it's like midnight now. So the streets are pretty empty. Uh, you guys uh, probably get off around uh, around the um, <laughs> like bus stop that the uh, uh, Luminos is at. Sure. Uh, so you do see one or two very fancy cars stop by. A very fancy person steps out, and they only take like maybe three steps before they are intercepted by a bodyguard and then kind of checked and then allowed in. Okay. So 
you do not see very fancy people walking around on the streets. Ah, they're you mostly, see, I see. Exa- they're mostly dr- Free being driven. Transit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Got it. Uh, but you do see the odd person who's not very bougie walking around. You do see one or two civilians, normal, regular-ass humans walking around. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I think... Can I do some sort of check to see if I can spot one that appears to be particularly um, uh, uh, absent-minded? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and roll plus wisdom. Okay, which would be oh zero. Yikes. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Still a pass. Uh, so you're looking around, and uh, you definitely do see. Uh, one person who is kind of like walking along, they've got their shoulders hum- hunched up in a big in a big kind of puffy jacket, uh, and they're just kind of like muttering to themselves as they're walking down the street. Okay, I would like for Rippy to intercept, and when I get close enough, I would like to stumble into them and use sleight of hand. Yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll plus dexterity. Oh my god, dude. Holy fuck. Well, Uh-oh. okay, well, let's let's play it out, and then, uh, yep. then we can see how well... Um, <clears throat> tiger intercepts yeah so i think what happens is uh you you kind of are walking the person doesn't even see you coming you end up bump, bumping into them uh you know shoulder first and uh you get your hand into their pocket without them noticing at all but they kind of like freak out when you bump into them and they okay. kind of like sprawl backwards okay um and their phone drops onto the ground ah okay so uh it, it has fallen out of their pocket it's on the ground uh, and they kind of like uh, back up the what? what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? What's going on? What, what, what the hell? I think as soon as he does that, Rip, Rippy is Rippy's like exactly matching his energy. It's exactly yeah. as, as frantic as he is. Rippy's now backing up and like dusting himself and like checking his pockets and going, Oh, yeah. steady. Oh, what are you doing? Watch away. You're what are you? walking. What's wrong with you? What are you looking you, 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 right you, you usually just stumble into people like that. I'm an important person. You can't just do that to me. And while he's doing that, he's he's like looking to make eye contact with Tiger to yes. like why his eyes like uh yeah okay that went terribly <laughs> yeah, as soon as a tiger sees mouths moving uh she'll be walking up towards him and uh saying you uh, what's, did, you, what's your problem you just left the card game and thinking oh. you can't settle up when you know that you owe me from the last oh, week and you're not oh, gonna get you, away this time uh, it's buster not, it's nothing like that look here it was just a bit of I a you talk and change. talk and talk and you're gonna uh, give me the money oh, 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 that you owe me okay well we can talk about something this. That, it's something that they just so gonna, and i think like as this is going on uh rippy's sort of like pulling on the guy's jacket to try to put him between um <laughs> tiger and himself just, like, <laughs> just to like make him even more uncomfortable <laughs> he's going like yeah, he's like you... he's now hunched <laughs> so hard his shoulders are in his ears. I don't even know. I don't know. I was just here. I was just walking. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know if you any card game. I don't even know what's going on here. I, I think Rippy's like now that the conversation is like getting more and more energetic. Rippy's like gesturing towards the guy that he's holding and being like, you know, something, something. This might be slightly his fault too. Honestly, can't you try to be more? Oh, what you happening? think you're gonna yeah, settle it, up? Well, you better prove uh, it, buddy. You I better pass it. Over. You know? and then I, think I was just walking, man. <laughs> I think Rippy would just like shove the guy down the road and see if he just keeps going. Um. Okay. Why don't you roll plus dexterity or, or charisma, whichever is higher? Actually, you know what? Uh, how about, why don't we? Okay. And I'm gonna change this because I forgot that his phone is still on the ground. So he's obviously gonna yeah. be. He'd obviously be sort of um, amused by that. So here's what I would like to do. I would like to uh, use con artist. So Connor, okay. specifically, I want to use it to try to talk myself out of trouble. And okay. what I what I want to do to try to talk myself out of trouble is I want to take this guy around the shoulder, you know, sort of like I'm taking him aside for a little side conversation. Yeah. And I want to basically tell him, like, you don't want to fuck with this and point over my shoulder at Tiger and be like, I've had dealings with her in the past. And like, you, this is going to be bad. This is like you. You're going to want to get the fuck out of here because do not cross this creature that you like this. You will end up in the newspaper. Okay, okay. I think that sounds good. Uh, well, go ahead and roll for... Uh, what sure. does con artist say? It says, uh, whenever you talk yourself out of trouble, roll plus charisma. If you roll a 10 plus, you are successful and you gain plus one forward on the next move to deceive the same person. On a seven to nine, you're still successful. The GM will tell you one of the following has happened. Your lie leads to another, which requires a new roll. 
suspicion or unwanted attention. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, go ahead and roll Connor. Can it be at advantage because we're doing the whole thing? You know what? Yes, it can. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hey. Oh, God, dude. I've rolled a seven, a seven, a six, and a seven. Yep. Okay. It's a bad night. Oh, dude, dude your rolls. Oh. This, okay, there we go. There we go. The party's rolls this this arc have been red ink rolls, uh, man. Happen, I, yeah, it feels yeah. like it. Ones that I've seen I like all it. campaign long. It feels like we're on expert mode, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. Okay, but thank God it was an advantage because that one was a thirteen. Yeah. Fuck. Um. So uh, I think he just like looks you dead in the eyes. Yep. And then he looks over your shoulder at who still looks like a giant fucking cat <laughs> yeah. of which there have been zero yeah. uh, and he just goes like white as a sheet <laughs> as he assumes that um, Tiger is an ascended oh and yeah he, has, he just runs oh my god <laughs> yeah I think, I think as soon as he does, Rippy like watches him like run off until the guy sort of gets intermingled in the crowd and then claps yeah. his hands once and goes, Lovely! Wow! <laughs> that wasn't so bad, was it? Yeah, nicely done. The phone is still on the ground. Easy. There we are. Okay, now what are we going to use that for? Oh, yeah, social media and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, I've got to figure out how to... I'll figure it out. All right, give me this and I'll... I'll start finoodling it because actually I'm assuming I'd be familiar with like cell phone technology. Being oh, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm absolutely. Um, so you turn uh, it on and it requires a passcode. Uh, fuck. Try one, 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 one. I, I try one, 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 one. It unlocks. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my suitcase combination. <laughs> Um, all right, I will, uh, oh boy, uh, you know what, when, eh, in for penny, in for pound, is there any, like, uh, pay for followers, uh, is there any, yeah, one, <laughs> is there any pay for followers, and two, does this guy have, like, any, uh, um, uh, like, crypto wallet set up to the <laughs> scene, this cell phone or anything <laughs> like that? Um, yeah, he's got this really cool boost feature where, you can pay real money to make oh, his yes. tweets more visible. Oh, and, God. Yeah. Does it have like, is it like a $500 limit though? Because I wouldn't want to be too ridiculous with it. No, yeah. No, it caps you at only $500 because let's not get carried away here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great, <laughs> yeah. Great, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. I'm fucking dead inside. <laughs> um, Social media manager. <laughs> what's uh, what's Red Ink Twitter called? It's probably something really evil sounding like like meta or metaverse or something. It's probably really yes. oh, God. just exaggerating oh, evil sounding. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, oh. it's, it's called... Uh, it's called Reddit. Uh, Cinder. 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 I love that. Cinder. Oh my good. god. That's extremely Fuck good. My life. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna make right. one of those well, accounts. I will. Yeah, I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna go to Cinder. I'm gonna go to instant fan i'm gonna go to <laughs> only feet and i'm just gonna go. <laughs> i'm gonna set up accounts for uh um or for er at uh yeah for for all of these things and i'm just gonna be like hey hold on give me a picture of yourself i need something good hey, get underneath the post light i'm gonna change the exposure or i'm gonna make like a real fancy photo and just like you know just make it very artistic yeah uh roll plus charisma for like a performance with okay. this, uh, with this, with this camera. Holy shit! Yes. <laughs> yes. These pictures are like, damn, man. The lighting, the angles, the shadows, the way they cast over, you know, parts of the face and kind of cascade onto the street. It starts raining a little bit, and it just looks like, uh, looks like <laughs> a, a modern noir kind of uh mm -hmm. kind of picture mm -hmm. like this is this is our you take it in black and white and this thing is artistic as fuck um all the like inks in the picture, multiverse and she walked into mine <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes exactly uh legitimately take a plus one whenever you use this picture to deceive people wait Ooh. say that last part again <laughs> whenever you use this picture to deceive people whenever you try to sell 
Sebastian as this artist and you use this picture, take a plus one. Wow. Okay. It's that compelling. That's a you good picture. fucking 13 on that shit. <laughs> this picture is, is, is like compelling as fuck. Uh, roll plus intelligence, uh, Bishop Kane. Uh, my intelligence, I believe, is my highest, which is plus two. Uh, you also find, um, uh, you find a crypto wallet with three. <laughs> oh my god! Three bad coins in it. Oh, bad three bad, bad coins. Bad coins. Bad coins. Three bad coins. <laughs> what? A, how much is a bad coin worth? Uh, it depends on who's buying. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> um, they're 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 worth uh, they're worth uh, Bitcoin money. Oh, wow! Crap. Okay, so really? 120 yeah. grand. You just got that. Yeah, yeah, basically, yep. Yeah. Oh, shit. all right. Hey guys, we got money. We don't need to worry about selling. All right. <laughs> perfect. 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 <laughs> um. Oh, wait. How much is 120 thousand dollars like worth here? Like, is that? what's the economy like can i can i can i let's, check the can i check the markets with this one can i see what the economy is you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah yeah or like yeah, grab you, a newspaper and see what the sales are inside of them yeah, yeah any yeah, sandwich you, you boards for newspaper. cafes what's a yeah. coffee going for you go to goggle and take a look at the stock market goggle um and uh you uh you take a look at uh, how they're doing and i would say yeah um, to save myself from myself let's just call it normal north american you know kind of okay, so uh, it's in the garbage got it okay <laughs> yeah it's it's like you know like yeah 120 thousands i mean it's that's money to work that's with a good amount that's a good amount of money okay it's a good it. amount of money uh for the top elite it's probably nothing to brag about yeah <laughs> weak salary <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. Probably could afford a cozy apartment on the lower end of the district, but mm. like of the rich district. Gotcha. All right. So that, that okay. So that actually has me a little concerned because uh, one, if that is considered a decent amount of money for somebody who, you know, on the, the they're, they're doing well, but they're not like, oh, God, you know, they, they got all the money, you know, um, what is this guy doing with that money? Oh, mm. so maybe we don't want to liquidate yeah. the entire thing. Well, there would be a history of transactions, too. Yeah. What if you use it to buy something? No, I guess that doesn't really work. Hey, buy something of ours. Uh, you look at the history and it looks like he mined all three bad coins himself. Motherfucker. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> it's completely ours and we're completely safe. Okay, cool. Thank you, DM. I appreciate you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> As the DM um, wipes sweat from his brow from dodging some sort of <laughs> fucking financial disaster nightmare. Role play. <laughs> you brought us here, man. <laughs> so there, there's a reason that I, in real life, am not a millionaire. It's because I don't understand this shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Totally. What the fuck is a crypto? Speaking I, of which, in that, on that exact note, I did buy like 80 trillion uh, cat girl coins today. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, god. Really? Yes. Hey, like, cat you never girl know. coins? Yeah, I swear to God, I'm like, you know, you this here is definitely going to be the next meme, 100. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man, like Dogecoin and stuff. All you need, just get Elon to just send one tweet, man. You're a millionaire. And I've unlocked yeah. my phone. <laughs> he, ar he already has one, so that's why I was like, I'm getting in on this early. <laughs> ah, got it. There you go. We, what you really need to get into is these NFTs, whatever. Oh my the God! Fuck what that even shit is that? Non-forwarding we'll transfers. After the session, but the cat girl coin started because they wanted to do a cat girl collection NFT. Oh hey, wow. there you go. And well, I'm like, that's actually going to be pretty fucking. Big. It's a double whammy, man. Yeah. yeah. And it's just so you know what that is, Tech. It's a picture that only one person has the authentic copy of. Like you retain proof that you have the authentic one copy. Okay. Yeah, it assigns ownership of, exactly. of a of a, a, of a digital, digital thing, kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. non non fungible token, and it's a Yuck. it's basically you you own it by right, but anybody with a right click uh, <laughs> yeah. can also own it. Yeah, exactly. Ew. <laughs> okay. All right, so we found that. Okay, now are oh. we? Do we? Yeah. What's up? I need I need help making. Uh, I need a either a gaudy or pretentious name for this piece of art. 
Oh, true. Oh. What, what are you, well, I was thinking, if we're having the some trouble... of self-actualization. I was thinking something <laughs> avant-garde, oh, like piece de neige. Like, so, like piece of winter or piece of snow, you know? Piece hmm. de neige, piece of snow. What does it mean? Who fucking knows? Who cares? Nothing. It's... Yeah, it's incredibly brittle, and if you if you touch it, it melts away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. actually, it could be like one of those things that if it, this does break and it's named that, it might make it more yeah. expensive. Oh, true. The two pieces of the, of neige, the two pièces de neige, could do. I, what do you think? Uh, you know, let's go with it. Let's go with it. Let's. Well, 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 everybody come up with one, and he can pick his favorite. Why is it? Why is it always have to be a competition with you? It was <laughs> modern masculinity is what you should call it. Oh, 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 Oh God! Um. All right. Uh. Boy, I uh, wasn't expecting to be put on the spot like this. Um. The. Uh, what was the name of that idiot again? The one that we rammed into the wall. Oh, uh, Gamork. Grom. Grundle. Grind. Griddle. Griddle. I think was. I think was named after a pancake maker. Griddle. Grom? Oh, Grom. G-R-O-M. Yes, Grom. Yes. Grom. Yeah, that's what I said. Yep. That's what I remembered it with my steel trap memory. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we try to sell it from like, you know, this is the, you know, if we go with that route of like, you know, this is the last scepter. This is the scepter of the last person who dared to try to break down these walls. Why don't we call it uh, Grom's memoir or some shit like that? I don't know. Hmm. Grom's we're, 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 Grom's. We're, we're not. I thought we were advertising it as a piece of work, piece of artwork. It is. It's an antique now. Oh. So if I made it, sounds then complicated. it's not an antique. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, I was saying that you made all oh, right shit. In that case, I'll call it a, a fucking icicle. I don't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> lovely contribution, Greg. I don't know what to tell you. I don't I, I I get paid to remember things and investigate shit, not name fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> I just for the record, Mr. Sebastian, I think you're a visionary. Don't listen to him. He didn't actually <laughs> fucking make it. I'm the one that picked it up. You listen to a word he says, you're gonna I'm be believing in you. You're gonna be, you're gonna be great, okay? You're gonna be great. Gonna don't be listen huge. to him. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> <laughs> so the three we have is uh icicle. Uh, modern masculinity, and what was uh, the other one? P.S. De Neige. Go with your gut, uh, auteur. What is your, what does it say to you? Mm. Scepter of fragility. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you could, you could just call it piece six, like just a number, you How about know? Uh, sh mm, short winter, early spring. Oh, Something oh, lovely. So it's fragile like an icicle, but because it's made of wood and beautiful, that's what you're looking forward to. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, I want to change mine to the ice stick. Okay. <laughs> no. Ice stick. <laughs> the ice stick, yes. Still like short winter, early spring. But yeah. good try. That was very good also. Damn, I thought I was getting better. <laughs> Okay, love it. Let's go with that. Okay, so have you got the uh, social media? Okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm obviously going through it. Um, oh, okay. Well, have I? I mean, I'm. I'm I was waiting for tech. Uh, do, have I gotten the social media? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. No, it's all set up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I immediately mean, start buying followers. I want them to be over a million followers by the time I get to wherever. <laughs> <laughs> bot, 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 bot. Okay, yeah. So you, you set up an account and you pay you pay five hundred dollars uh, to to boost the the Cinder account. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you create a new account to spend another new five hundred dollars uh, to boost it. Right. Um, and you're killing me. 
<laughs> uh, the first one, you notice you get like 12 new followers and then you get two and then every $500 gets you one new follower who unfollows a couple of minutes oh later. Oh my God. Oh this place okay. is hell. <laughs> this place is hell. <laughs> God. What will it take to get the red check mark? I just need the red check mark. I just need the red check mark. <laughs> the red check mark. God. And then you notice uh, hashtag uh is trending. Ooh. Um, and everyone is just tearing down, uh, like they're just talking about his, uh, his unethical, unenvironmental practices oh about Excellent. how much he hates the uh, environment and children and oh, about no. how one time, uh, he refused to buy a puppy, which means that he supports puppy mills oh and, um, it is like just being dragged through the mud. I That's don't know probably just going to be good for you. I will tweet yeah. out. I, I, sorry, I will. I will send out a yep. message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I will. I will send out. Uh, all the accusations are completely true. <laughs> <laughs> you just make yes. yourself that much more. Uh... Can't smear us if yep. I admit to it. Yep. Um, and uh, you just watch that trending go up and up and up until like it's hundreds of thousands of tweets an hour kind of thing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and then um hashtag cute puppy pick starts trending and hashtag uh just vanishes off the face of the planet oh my God. sounds good perfect perfect <laughs> <laughs> all in a day all in a day <laughs> uh, okay all right yeah, yeah the, all the, the, we're good to go um, you're famous now you happy yeah. all right good okay great <laughs> uh okay okay uh yeah so i guess uh i guess now we'd pretty much be ready to um for the for the the big uh the big swoop which is to go to this uh Lum luminos yep go to luminos and uh now it's gonna be up to rippy <clears throat> to well i mean i guess should we should we use some of that bad coin to try to get new outfits for ourselves yeah i would that i was, I was gonna suggest yeah. sure let's do that and then i think we'll be set up then i think we'll be able to make it an actual good is there impression. anything that's open this lane oh wait i'll just google late night taylor there we go there you go you goggle night late night la, night wow no, no, <laughs> hey, it's like goggling. We're goggling for uh -oh. that one got way the fuck away from me <laughs> holy that was like a runaway train you goggle wow you know what you goggle the thing you i goggle, the, the goggle. Taylor. I goggle with late the word. night taylor that's what wow. i wow yeah that's impressive i'm okay. impressed that you can say that you goggle night like taylor Yep. <laughs> you Google Nightlight Taylor. Uh, you know, I realize it's a typo and I delete. I don't Google a Nightlight. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> well, you Google Late Night Taylor. There you Yay! go. Yay! There you go. You what got a combination of mouth sounds that is. Uh, and you find around you, there are a number that open at midnight. Perfect. Open at midnight. That's got to be good. And they Get have catering got to the some, vampire crowd. Yeah, they have got some like really, really interesting names like Deja or mm. Soleil <laughs> or Elements. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's a couple very fine tailors that can, are open nearby. Can I roll to see if if uh, Rippy would have any sort of sense by by their you know their choice of their business description, uh, how much he would know about their ability to make a good suit since he's a person who like always wears a suit? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and roll plus uh, intelligence. Okay. okay. Yep. Um. So you would say probably the fact that they're opening at midnight yep. means that they're all kind of on that weird. really <laughs> yeah. weird artsy kind of uh, 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 fanciness so they're all probably pretty solid choices okay um but the elements one because it is spelled l e l e m e n c e oh my god is probably the most like <laughs> artsy fartsy one well if we're looking to make a, a strong statement, then uh, Elements is probably where we're going to want to go. Perfect. Where's that at? It's um, right over here, isn't it? And it, yeah, he points at the map on my phone, and I say it's right there. 
What a strange device you're holding. I've never seen such a... Okay, yeah, okay. Oh <laughs> Let's just say, keep that away from yourself there, kitty cat. If you're a knowledge eater, that would be like a nuclear tic-tac. Whoa! <laughs> Holy fuck, so Why true. Too what much? if I ate the internet? That's such oh, a good idea. Oh, boy. That would probably cause the collapse of space and time forward and backward. <laughs> but it be probably. worth it. Well, that depends on who you're asking. Can you? Yeah, everyone Me? else? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We'll have fun with it. We'll have a digest Wikipedia where anyone can upload what they think is real. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, um, well, let's go. I found a brownie on the ground. Oh, nice. <laughs> Is it, is it still good? You sure it's a brownie? Wouldn't necessarily recommend eating it just based upon where we are right now, you know? Who knows? I'm sure it'll be it? fine. Uh, okay. All right, come on, this way. Roll for poison brownies. No. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for weed brownie. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so you guys are going to elements? Yep. Okay. So you, uh, let's change up the music. Let's give you some elements music. Uh, okay. Uh, what would be some good elements music? I may have Darnassus. taken all this in. Darnassus? <laughs> I thought it was um, gonna be the Yo-Yo Boy dance oh, music. Oh, oh, that's also pretty <laughs> history. Um, do I have, uh, what, uh, none of these names mean anything. What's dude the same? What is due to saying when you think right, about yeah, it? Exactly. Really. I ask myself the same thing every morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> myself uh, in the face and I say, you stupid fucking idiot, what is due to saying? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Say, Don't you, be mean. You, I point myself in the face and say, you <laughs> fucking asshole, what is it? <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, I don't think any of these are good. Okay, just like, let me grab a new uh, track. I did not set up uh, music beforehand, so let's grab. Um, there's some nice stuff. What's that one? What's this? Nope, that's really sad. I don't think they're gonna play that Kane's would be hilarious funeral song uh, from <laughs> Destiny here. Uh, let's go ahead. What's this one? Yeah, sure. How about the? Uh... You know what? I don't even care what the. I have no idea what this is. We're going with it. Whatever it is, it is this the music, is the music that yep. plays. We'll take our cue from whatever the music is. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh. Um, Whoa, what the? I, I like to move for a hard pass on that. <laughs> Second. Wow. This is. Oh, uh, holy shit. This is my perfect <laughs> kind of vibe. I feel I mean, at home here. I feel like. I feel like I shouldn't tell you what this is from. White ink. From the white ink, I, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Well, <laughs> actually not. Oh. It's not? No. This is from the green ink. Oh. Is it horse bus? No, not horse bus. What? I'm pretty oh, sure it's from StarCraft, but I don't know what. It, it is from StarCraft. Oh. You know what? Go. I'm just going to you, know, you guys don't need to know. You, you, know, you got to tell us that. We'll die of you curiosity. Lead, you can't just lead in with that. From a big old goodbye. No, shut oh. up. Yeah. Is this Jake's goodbye? This is Jake's goodbye. Oh, that is a little too weird vibe. Man. That's a weird vibe for sure. You know what? This is the fucking red ink. This is fucking blasting over the speakers. <laughs> oh Luckily, my God. we're totally okay, different characters, so we have no F idea. You from the universe. I was going to say the weird, the weird uh, synchronicities and overlaps of parallel universes and shit. Exactly. It okay. just so happens that this song is playing uh there are like um neon tube lights kind of like pumping and pulsing around kind of thing um there are people wearing very 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 bougie very haute couture outfits in here um and there's not a single fucking cowboy hat or spur to be seen okay. and this music is just just drowning everything out it's so loud in here. Weird. That is weird. It's like the concept of cowboys doesn't even exist in this universe. <laughs> sure. Well, the music does. 
The music like, absolutely uh, does. It's sort of like it how just it's means weird something and, different. Yeah, it's sort of like it's weird how uh, in our reality, every movie has that weird forced love scene. Here in this universe, yes. every clothing store has this bizarre, loud country western music yes. for <laughs> yeah. no reason. Exactly. Yeah, it just as artificially and out of place and forced into everything. That's exactly. what is here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think. Uh, I think. So I want Rippy to uh, take off his hat, uh, his his top hat, and like smooth his fucking oily hair over. And yeah. um, oh, I'm just wondering, like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go with like my, uh, I'm not gonna use my ascended form or anything. I'm just gonna slick his hair over. He's gonna. Like, <laughs> into his hand and then smooth his, his slime it into his hair to smooth over his comb over and then i want yeah. him to look for like the, the the person on the floor like the floor <clears throat> sales person um yeah there is this uh very thin uh person with kind of um slicked back hair and a and a man bun um in uh, you know they have a they have man bun hairdo uh it's pulled back very tightly they've got just a tiny little pencil mustache okay. uh, and their eyes are kind of half closed and they've got like a big beak nose and t- just, a, oh, just yep. a slit of Wait, a mouth yep, kind of I thing. can picture the fucking Disney it's, character. <laughs> yeah. Is this the receptionist from Volus's building? This, is this a second job? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, they look strikingly similar. <laughs> Um, so I'll say that uh, Rippy's going gonna walk up and he's sort of like holding his his hat against his chest in a dignified way, but very like sure of himself. Like he's walking yeah. very confidently. And I think he would walk straight up to that guy and without even like waiting to see if the guy has, has acknowledged Rippy's uh, presence, he would immediately turn around and gingerly gesture towards Sebastian with his hat and then look back at the salesperson and say, Good afternoon. Do you have any idea who that is? Bonjour. I believe you're. <gasps> is that. Is that. Uh... Uh, Sebastian lifts his head. It's like, looks towards him. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <gasps> you are the one who hates the puppies. Uh, Sebastian bows. <laughs> and he bows E like twice <laughs> as deep. We are honored to have you here uh, in our shop here at Elements. Uh, oh, please, uh, please say that I'm allowed to dress you. Well, here is what we were thinking. I think you and I could both agree that uh, if we were to uh, put something on Cinder about your shop, you would probably see a return in your quarterly uh, investments, wouldn't you? I f- uh, was willing to uh, take a picture here inside this store, perhaps trying on an, an outfit. It would be amazing for our business. Okay, so instead of uh, you paying us for the exposure, why don't you just give us each a nice suit for free? Hey? What just one? Saying? Oh, uh, no, I'm, I meant uh, three suits each. Yes, three suits each for one photograph. Uh, go ahead and roll plus charisma uh, with advantage. Fuck yeah, baby. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Yep, yep, no, okay. nine is very high mixed success. Um, he, he looks you all over uh, and then he kind of stops at Tiger and says, uh, I'm not sure if I have one that will fit the... Uh, and he kind of like waves his hands <laughs> and kind of like a multi-formed kind of hourglass kind of like uh, kind of thing. <laughs> if I have a cat-shaped clothing, but well, I will see what I, I can do. Are you trying to say that you can outfit the great us? Uh, personal bodyguard what sort of place have we come to aren't you a talented seam see seamstress seamster see seams person seems in <laughs> see, maker maker of seams fuck you <laughs> fuck you can't make seams you twat um and uh like as you say this he kind of like inhales and raises his chin up and his nose up and he says it shall be my greatest conquest. 
to dress you. <laughs> Half and, and, uh, it, 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 midway in that statement, I think Rebu just, could you speed it up a bit, you know? Skip the soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> it would be my greatest okay, and yeah. most defining yeah, moment in the team's finest oh, right. yeah, get it. Okay, get, move it on now. Just get to the snippy, snippy, sewy, sewy, stitchy, stitchy, eh? Great. And he starts walking, uh, he starts walking like Jack Skellington with like big, long strides, <laughs> kind of thing with his weird twiggy legs. Um, and uh, he, he kind of like takes one step and now he's like behind a, a rack of clothing kind of thing and he kind of pushes it and it swirls around and he steps like delicately around and above and below and through it kind of thing as he's pulling out jackets <laughs> and pants and all sorts of things and kind of like as it's spinning in between you he's catching it and sending it spinning around the other way and he's kind of holding clothes up to your chests and pants at your legs and uh, kind of taking your measurements while chesting, testing the clothing kind of thing. Uh, why don't you all all roll plus charisma to see how good your outfit looks. Ooh, Ooh. what are we rolling plus? Sorry, uh, charisma. Charisma. Mm. That's perfect. <laughs> oh nope. Oh, <laughs> see, that's gonna work. I think for yeah, uh, for both. So too, absolutely. Okay, so Bishop, you end up with just it's basically the same kind of suit. You've always been wearing. <laughs> That's perfect. It's but so it's, unique. It's, but it's perfectly tailored. Like this, like your suits have always been very well tailored, but this thing, it's like, it's like it was literally birthed into existence, meant to fit onto you. Um, Bishop, uh, your really? legs are so long now. <laughs> yeah, they've always been like that. Oh. Um, Rippy, you look full on leader of First City Hunger Games, kind of <laughs> insane, posh, crazy, high money kind of look. Okay. Um, Tiger, uh, you look like the Hulk mid transformation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is ripping at the seams and it is a fucking disaster. I'm going to be standing with my arms crossed the whole time kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so whenever, yeah, if anyone, that'll be perfect. It'll be used for intimidation. I'll rip it entirely if somebody looks at that, uh, Sebastian wrong. <laughs> I can't even play it. He's like, you know how many suits we go through because Constantly. Tiger has to do something. Exactly. Um, Sebastian. Oh boy, here we you go. Have got, <laughs> you have got uh, basically a giant Robin Hood hat on with a one giant red feather in the top. Uh, you are wearing booty shorts with um, bunny slippers. Oh my God. Uh, and a tuxedo vest with nothing else. I, I think Sebastian like walks out of the fitting room <laughs> and then like he kind of like puts his hand, you know, like, like kind of like the look at this motion. Yeah. And he's just like, doesn't exactly know how to emote to this. He's just like, uh, the seamstress faints. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I, like, I bet. Uh, I think, I think, oh, as, he just it, faints. It, it, <laughs> as, as soon as, um, as soon as Sebastian walks out of the dressing room, immediately thick beads of sweat begin to appear on uh, Rippy's head. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus, how the fuck are we going to sell this? Oh, God, no. Nah. Shit. I think, uh, I think. Uh, Sebastian like tries to wake up the dude. Yeah, and he basically motions like, "Help me fix this." You know, like like it's like I I, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and uh, uh, like as he kind of wakes up, he's like, "Oh, ah, oh, you are uh, you are more radiant than uh, a, a a summer morning sunrise." Above the greatest mountain range he, on the most glorious he's day. He's he helps him up oh. and then and then walks over to uh uh Rippy yeah. and uh points to his suit and then yeah. points back to himself. Like he's like pulling at his suit, he's like, I want this, I, I want to look like this. This here. <laughs> he kinda like puts both hands on your chest. He's like, I would never besmirch the beauty that is your creative vision 
with something <gasps> as disgusting and normal and expected as this disgusting oh. outfit. Uh, I would he's, never he's, dress he's you at me right now? like some sort of <laughs> corporate <laughs> mannequin that we have seen 10,000 times. You will stand out and you will be radiant and you will shame everybody. I must carve out my eyes for uh, what I have seen. Oh boy. Excuse me. Actually, can I, uh, like, I go over to Bishop as like, and I, like, signal for his phone. Mm -hmm. I, it's I, just, I, I, he wants to look it. through the, he wants to look through the social media that he's been buying up. It's just like, wait, what kind of artist am I? What, what are you even saying? <laughs> um, as you scroll through all the social media, I mean, you don't have any art, but it's all been just descriptions of your, like, creative process kind of thing. It's like, today, uh, took a fresh cucumber bath with no water and <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh went for a jog upside down um in the forest kind of thing <laughs> and so it's all these like absolutely insane things that make no sense and everyone like this like when you went for a jog upside down in the forest um like hundreds of people we're, we're talking about how the upside down jogs have in influenced them in s deep spiritual ways <laughs> and how they oh understand boy. the concepts of the universe better thanks to us creative process that has unlocked <laughs> a piece of their soul kind of thing. So like uh, the weird <laughs> shit that's been tweeted is like resonating with this really bizarre crowd that obviously the seamster is like insanely very much a part of. Oh my God. Okay. I think he slowly gives the phone back to Bishop. I just wink. And then uh, he like very much like, like I don't know if you've ever seen Star Trek where Picard like puts a, a, a hand on his second in command shoulder and it's just like, you know, he kind of stares at him and then he just kind of like nods approvingly and then <laughs> walks back towards uh, the, the store owner. Yeah. Like, like good job. Good job. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, well I, I'm I mean I'm pretty happy with and so has has um Tiger been dressed in anything? Yeah, it looks like a mid transformation hulk. Everything's oh, yeah, that's, that's, very bad. That's, that's right, okay. Um okay, well I mean now that we're all dolled up, I guess there's nothing to it but to do it. Head over to Luminos. Lumin yeah, Luminos. Yep. Okay. Yep. What are you gonna post? Uh, are you just posting your yourself from uh, the stop the shop? Uh, well, I think we should. Uh, I think we should say. I think we should say something like uh, the whole scene that the uh, the whole scene that the shop the the this the tailor made the whole scene with uh, 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 <sighs> Sebastian not being super happy with his product, I think now we should turn it into like, yeah, well, you know, we're gonna see if this is gonna work out. Oh. We're not entirely sure that this is exactly in line with our aesthetics. So we're gonna have to see what we think before we go ahead and pull the trigger on promoting you openly. You know, you dig? I uh, yeah, I, I'm, obvi I'm obviously behind this. He insulted me and said that I'm mundane and average. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, uh, like they're okay with that. They're, they're like, oh yeah, yeah no, of course. Uh, you, you go, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, so I think we don't have to tweet anything. I say we'll just, and I think that's probably for the best because we probably don't want to make too many, too many openly public non Photoshopped appearances. Right. I think that's the more true. we can sort of obscure our online activity, the, the better it'll be in terms of our upcoming power moves. I like I it. Agree. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I think now we'd go off to, uh, Luminos. Okay, everyone's on board? Yep. Uh, yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so you guys head over to Luminos, uh, where there is, um, no, uh, weird, uh, Wings of Liberty I just uh, wanted to get out of the door for that reason. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... And uh, you guys head over to the entrance of Luminos, which again, it's not really uh, the the entrance. This is like the entrance to the hotel, which is very heavily guarded. Uh, and then you will need to go up 
a number of floors to where Luminos is in the middle of the hotel. Uh, so let's grab... You know what? Fuck it. Let's do this one. Uh, okay, so you guys uh, are now in front of the, the main entrance to Luminos. Uh, a very fancy car pulls up. A very fancy person walks out. They're checked by the bodyguards, and then they are allowed in. And, uh, yeah, you guys are at the entrance. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to have, well, I think, okay. I think Rippy would, Rippy would pull Bishop aside and say something like, well, we can't exactly have... Uh, Mr. Uh, simply walk up to the front door. No, no, that would be too mainstream. Might make more sense for his managers to approach him and make the uh, the front door staff aware of his impending arrival. What do you think? I like that. And then I'm also thinking maybe we have uh, somebody fire off uh, uh, fireworks. Oh, well... It's not a bad idea, as a matter of fact. Okay, fine. Do, firecrackers. Fi well, well, do you know anyone who's got firecrackers? Uh, I get on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got somebody who got Roman candles. That might be good enough. <laughs> Roman candle. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can do that. Are you sure we'll be able, be able to find someone who can do it without causing a scene or burning anything down? You know, it will be pretty important, probably. I know a guy. Uh, <laughs> well, that has got to be probably the least assuring thing you've ever said. What? No, it's one of my abilities. It's called I know a guy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> now we're talking. No, I mean, that's that stupid idea. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, but it's, it's incredibly dumb. I'm actually a little uh, disappointed with you that you didn't oh, try oh, to stop oh, me by any oh, means at all. You oh. were just going to completely let me go through with it. That was well, incredibly foolish of you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. All right. Um, no, that's no. Yeah, that, no, I like that. All right. Let, let, let's approach his manners and be like, all right, we are we are management. We are the management team for uh, he will be yeah. uh, arriving shortly. Do you have a red carpet ready? Precisely. Like that, you know? Exactly like that. We belong here. You answer to us like, yeah, we got to be, you know, we got to be like, you know, yes, exactly. Don't you dare turn us away. Yes, precisely. OK, let's let's go and uh, you give it a try. And I'll give it a try right after you. Uh, uh, uh why, like, why don't you? I'll, I'll be here for backup. Or do you think I'm pretty? Oh, 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 yeah, never mind. You take it. How about we just seat. go together and we say okay. with the management team? Perfect. Sounds great. All right. And let's do yeah. that thing. Okay, you guys, you guys. So there's, there's uh, two big bodyguards yep. that are kind of standing near the, the front entrance. Yep. So um, I think, uh, I think. The, the 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 duo would probably approach and rippy would once again remove his hat and then uh look at um bishop sort of like giving him the chance to speak first at while with his hat once again sort of gesturing in sebastian's direction um hello there you're on the list i believe list we're above lists. Um, we will be arriving with Mr. Err uh here shortly. We're his management team. Who? Err? Uh? Err? Uh? Err, uh, what? Uh, uh? Yeah, exactly. That's the guy. Err, uh, what? Exactly. Funny. Get lost. But I get out my phone and I show him the account. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. His name is uh, Err. Roll, uh, you're showing them a picture kind of thing? I'm showing I'm showing him the picture. I'm showing him the account. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, roll uh, with 7.6 million followers. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not voting really worked. Um, roll roll plus charisma plus one because you're using the picture. Okay. <laughs> Beep. Um, he looks at the picture. He's like, "All right, so they're important. Are they on the list?" Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they should be on the list. They are, uh. Uh, he pulls out his list and he's like, uh. Exactly. I, You've got him. Uh, you found him. <laughs> Great. Uh, You've got him uh, right perfect. there. I don't see, uh, on here. One sec. Bill, do you got an, uh, on your list? The other guy's like, uh. So no, he's no, found uh, him right there. <laughs> see, he's found him too. All right, so okay, this this highfalutin artsy guy wants in, not on the list. 
have your guys talk to the manager. You can send some at some other time. Wait, wait, who's the uh, who's the manager? Okay, so you want to come in here? You want to come into Luminos? You don't even know who the, mo- who the who the manager is. You look here, you big tall stupid donkey's ass. Listen closely. We're the management of one of the biggest artists this stinking city will see for another decade. Unless hey, you Bill. want to. F- Hold my list. I gotta beat a man up. Oh, is that what you? <laughs> well, well, well. It's come down to this, has it? And I would like to use uh, fortune teller. Okay. When you tell a mark their fortune roll plus charisma on a ten plus, they will believe you and act as if that is their fate until your prediction is proven wrong or you're shown to be a fraud. On a seven to nine, you are still successful, but the mark will be suspicious and look for re- reasons to disbelieve you. So I want to use that in conjunction with my halfling bonus to get a plus once on someone that I just met when I'm trying mm-hmm. to deceive them. And I want yep. to roll to try to convince him that um, if he uh, turns, that if he turns this opportunity down, uh, like his management is going to find out. Like I'm trying to convince him that he's making the same the same mistake that um, Queen's first manager made. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Like if he misses this opportunity, he's missing the opportunity of a lifetime, and he will be the laughing stock of his entire organization. So I'd like to imagine that he go uh, he goes up and like in, in a completely non threatening way puts a hand on the guy's shoulder to like pass a friendly word, and maybe now I'll roll to see just what he says um okay so um like how how effective he is at getting that message across yeah yeah um i would say when you put your hand on his shoulder yep he looks like he looks like his ears are closing up like he's about to not hear what you're gonna say okay um and you get the sense that probably putting a hand on this guy is like that's the grounds that he needs to like physically throw you kind of thing okay i'll say that as soon as he does that rippy like switches the motion into like looking at his fingernails like he was just (laughs) casually (laughs) laissez-faire just sort of placing a hand (laughs) casually on this dude yeah 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 um Um, okay yeah Yeah, so go ahead and roll the uh, fortune telling and that's uh that would be plus charisma i suppose plus one for the uh bonus so 2d6 plus three oh my god dude man oh man Fuck. oh man with a plus with a three plus three you get the bare minimum pass god so okay so uh, what's yeah. the mix so it says uh, on a seven to nine you are still successful but the mark will be suspicious and look for reasons to disbelieve you um okay okay uh so uh you know you're you kind of so what do you tell him so i think yeah i think he'd go up and say look not that I particularly care whether or not you're good at your job, but whether or not, you know, you get fired for missing the chance of a lifetime. But if you spent a few moments of your precious day to go and look online, you'd see that you're turning down a very serious opportunity. A very serious opportunity. Why <laughs> turn it away? And you know Mr. Can you not, can you not what? pronounce T's? What are you saying? Of course saying we can really pronounce E's. Of course we can pronounce E's. You're missing the really important opportunity. Okay? You don't want to miss this really important opportunity. I need you to use a different word. What are you talking about? <laughs> I need you to not say opportunity anymore. I need you to find any other All word. All right, well, you, you, you're, not taking, you're not making the most out of this situation. That's somehow you much, know, much more. You're not you making know the most of your situation. Make Boy, the most out of it if you yeah, can. Yeah, no, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. I'll get James. I'll get okay, James. Get James, see what that twat thinks. <laughs> um, And uh, he pulls out like a, a, a walkie talkie kind of thing. Okay. Uh, and he's like, uh, James, uh, there's. Someone named uh here. Oh, oh, yeah. No, uh, of course. Yeah, no. You know, he's he's on his way up right now. Of course, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thank, sorry, James. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. And he says, um, yeah. Uh, 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 
of course you would, and his head explodes. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I think I think Rippy would expressionlessly sort of wipe the gore off his face. <laughs> Just sort of like with a nice napkin, suit. wiping the brains <laughs> off of himself. <laughs> okay, well, all right, that happened. Um, and uh, Bill, who who was holding on to both lists, kind of thing, just kind of like turns and looks. He's like, oh, another one. <laughs> and he kind of like wipes some of the blood and bone and gore off his jacket kind of thing. And you can tell he's wearing like a, the material's kind of waterproof. It just kind of comes off <laughs> and he kind of gives it a shake. It all kind of hits the ground. Um, and uh, he puts a sign saying no admittance up kind of thing. Okay. And he kind of said, and he kind of like waves to you guys like, yeah, you can, you guys can go in. No problem. And he starts, he grabs the other guy by the legs and starts draw, dragging <laughs> his head and his oh body my God. across the street. Oh my God. <laughs> the designated watching, headless body he, dumping zone. As he literally just leaves the headless body on the other side of the street <laughs> and then walks back and turns the sign uh, away from saying no admittance to <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I suppose we'll go upstairs and speak to James. Yeah, James. That, that would be good. Yeah, James will be expecting you. Okay, sure. Well, right out and we go then. Oh, right. And right now it's just the two of us, right? Like the other two still haven't yeah. arrived? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, so. yeah. All right, then listen, uh, there's going to be two more. It's going to be another bodyguard, and then it's going to be uh, himself. Make sure you let them in unless, and I point at the body head exploding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is um, the bodyguard and uh going to be wearing? What, what should I look out for? Look for a big ass red feather in the cap. A big red feather in the cap? Yeah. It's literally going to be impossible to me. One, okay. one of them's very. <laughs> feline in nature <laughs> feet like a cat meow don't say don't, don't <laughs> say that no don't don't say the c word don't don't, don't, say, oh, don't say the c word don't say the c mm -mm. word uh -uh. Mm -hmm. don't say that it's okay um, if she says it but if you say if you say it, it, yeah. oh okay <laughs> yep. no, is feline it. okay or is that also bad well we just be committed maybe it's say something like it uh oh, what well, oh, boy good luck she loves whenever you offer. It's all me. I've got. Yeah, good, best of luck. <laughs> best of luck. Your best. Your best choice is is just to recognize them immediately, bow your head quietly, uh, and and move don't, the rope. Don't make eye contact. For, don't make for eye contact. Sake, whatever you do. Oh, is eye contact bad? Really bad. Oh, don't really? Do. Oh, go. Really? Did you not know that? <sighs> no, I had no idea. Oh yeah. Don't, Wait, don't eye contact eye. for R or the bodyguard? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now that we're clear, we're going to bring him in. Just remember what we said. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're careful about saying the name too much. He doesn't like that either. Okay. You got to make sure oh. you're not saying R all the time. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Hey, don't say L either. It sounds like mm. it's just one syllable away. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think we would, uh, we would, we would go and get the other two members and then bring them in. <laughs> that is the uh, best. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys head in, um, and, uh, Sebastian and Tiger, you show up and like, you see this one bodyguard, uh, and, and a, and a, and an upsetting amount of gore on the ground kind of thing. And uh, as soon as the bodyguard uh, sees you, he literally like this guy's huge, like um, uh, the, uh, Mr. Incredible. I don't remember what his actual name was, uh, but, you know, from the Incredibles, Mr. Incredible himself, he's kind of built like that. Okay. And uh, he literally like puts a hand on the front person in the front of the line of people who are going to get in and just like accordions the whole line backwards to make room for uh, you, uh, Tiger and Sebastian. Holy shit. In. And uh, he just like looks at the ground and you can tell he like, he looks up a little bit until he sees your feet and then he looks back down kind of thing to make absolutely no eye contact. And uh, he just like pushes everybody out of the way so you guys can enter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a whole production of checking that things are safe. Is the gore on the ground in the way of the door or is it to the side? A little bit. It's in the it's, way of the door? A little bit in the way of the door. Um, can I ask uh, the, oh, I'll tell the um, door man. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, 
Uh, Have it this we gotta clean this up. Can we not? Uh, hey, hey. Uh, yes, yes. This should be. You gotta give me your jacket. We gotta cover this up. He just like literally puts a hand on his chest and rips his whole jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and hands it to you without looking, even looking at you. Yes, what good prep work has been done. Excellent. I'll, I'll lay it over the gore so that. Uh, um, uh, can walk over. <laughs> uh, Sebastian like puts an arm on Tiger as like a thank you, and then nods, and then walks over. Like he's he's like really leaning into the I am a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you're passing, he's like, "Welcome to a uh, 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 no, uh, I mean, <laughs> this, this, um." Well, every, well, every time he says, says uh, or, he's like looking around frantically. <laughs> every time he says uh or um, you can see like uh, Rippy. Rippy is like like um, cringing, like scrunching up, like he's anticipating a blow every time he says uh or um. <laughs> well, well, welcome to welcome to Luminos. Right this way, right this way, my lord, right this way, we've got a spot for you. Manager would like to have a private word with you, please. And I think Rippy's like yeah. bowing every time he talks and like holding his his hat so low down on his chest and just like <laughs> bowing the whole time, just staring at his feet as he's walking. Right this way, my lord, sorry, sorry about the stairs, my lord, there's so many stairs. I said something, I said next time you're here, no more stairs, James can come downstairs. I tried to tell him a million times, I said again and again, my lord, so sorry about that. <laughs> Um, uh i think uh sebastian like okay is like i don't know how graceful you can walk in booty shorts and a robin hood <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to be slippers. like yeah, and buddy slippers, but he is trying to be as graceful as like looking as possible while yeah. uh while uh, Seb uh not sebastian but uh uh rippy is saying all this as he's moving forward with him um and uh what you see is like as you're like walking by everyone in line is all they've all got their phones out and they're all trying to snap pictures uh and as soon as they're all trying to snap pictures the bodyguard is just like grabbing phones out of people's hands and <laughs> smashing them on the ground <laughs> 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 hardcore man fucking hardcore awesome okay love it um and uh you go into the elevator at the back of the uh, the back of the entryway kind of thing and it has like uh maybe 87 floors on it okay but it goes like one to 42 and then instead of 43 it has the letter l on it uh with like sparkling lights and it's bejazzled and it's glowing and it's neon lights and all that kind of stuff so there's one big shiny light for for luminos interesting okay yeah I, I mean i guess uh we would just hit that one yep okay uh you're all in the elevator and um you uh the the elevator begins to ascend and it says like welcome to luminos this is the most exclusive club in varna frequented by the council themselves please behave yourselves while you attend and make sure to have a good time and then it uh stops as you reach the uh floor for luminos the doors open and you see the swankiest most fucking greasy schmoozy boozy uh super unethical <laughs> jazz lounge you've ever seen in your entire life oh my god there are um all sorts of uh very obvious shady dealings going on people uh very openly talking about killing robbing uh but in like business terms yeah of course like like heard... everyone here is just very openly talking about the most underhanded, nasty, totally what we would think to be illegal shit ever. Um, they're all holding champagne or old fashions. 
They're all uh, wearing incredibly immaculate business suits. Uh, and uh, a, a number of them are in their ascended form as well. Most of them are not, but some of them are fully in their monstrous ascended form in here. It's kind of like a super high-end version of the Star Wars Cantina. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Nice. Um, there are dancers who are basically entirely naked, except for kind of like projection hollow clothes on them oh, that, are, that are kind of flickering on and off, revealing oh. different parts of nudity and stuff like that. Kind of as they kind of dance and stuff. Fuck? Because that's really fucking awful. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Add it to the script. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it, it is just a very, very, very high-end bar. And as soon as you guys enter, this uh, gentleman wearing kind of uh, like punky spiked leather boots and a, uh, a, a white and pink tuxedo um, and uh, kind of like a, a, a curly Q beard, like it's a long beard that has been pulled in front in a big long curly Q kind of thing. Yep. Uh, walks up and says, well, if it isn't uh, himself inside of Luminos. Well, I can't tell you how long we've been waiting to have you here. Uh, you have made quite the name for yourself, and I'm so sorry it's taken us so long I, to get you a in, seat in, in here. In the middle of this whole thing, I think Rippy would step directly in front of him, like, what, yeah. like three inches away from his face, and hold up his hand in sort of like a firm, reassuring, but also very obviously concerned expression. And go, whoa, 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 whoa! You don't just walk right up and start talking to Mr. R. He has a very specific way of meeting people. He obviously only trusts those with utmost, uh, you know, reliability to be able to hear it's the sweetness of his voice. You think he's just going to speak to you? And listen, listen, before you go at sending any servers over to offer him a menu, he prefers to get the hard part of the day done before eating. So we'd like to see the people were interested in purchasing the most exclusive recent artwork by R. Where would we find the individuals interested in purchasing this? For goodness sake, figured you would have had this information ready to go. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't realize that you were bringing art here to sell tonight. Well, of course. Cool. If you don't explain. want to, we can by all means take our business elsewhere. No, 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 hold on now. Let's not get carried away. Uh, careful saying that. his name. Careful uh, now. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I, I'm not. I'm not used to having my a, a, absolute word for word yeah. uh, dissected quite so much. Well, I will use other sounds. Mm, no, I'm when careful. I need to just think. don't make any noise. Mm -hmm. Only words. Only words. Only, only words. Yep. Oh, all right, I, I'll ensure <laughs> that I only use fully formed words and sentences. Perfect. And I'll I just know take this a is pause. very difficult for you on multiple <laughs> levels, but I want you to know I'm Yo. very proud. <laughs> this is extraordinarily difficult for me. <laughs> and I need much longer pauses than normal to make sure that I can fully form the thought before I Say it out loud. <laughs> well, it's going to say it's going to serve you well, okay? Now, point us to where we can go to find the high rollers. All right, so if you're going to sell a piece of art uh -huh. here at Luminos, uh -huh. we might want to call some of our high rollers in. We don't have our standard fare of heavy money bags here tonight, but... We could always call them in and perhaps get you set up with an impromptu. Uh, boy, I really, I really just kind of hung on to that. <laughs> one. Yeah. Oh, that I thought it was going to change into something else, but it just kind of turned into the same word for a really <laughs> long said, time. Why would you insist on saying his name for thirty seconds? I really thought it was going to be a different word. I thought I could find. Like a he's way looking out of around, like <laughs> what is going on? Look, you, and it uh, turned out to... not to be another word. It was just a really wrong word <laughs> for a really long be, time. You're going to have to be careful or we're going to have to find somewhere else to, to, to go with our business. 
If you tell me one other place that you think would be a better place to sell this, I'll blow it up. <laughs> Faulos' Fal- <laughs> headquarters. Touche. <laughs> 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 so let, let me let me get that auction area set up for you so we can sell this piece of art real quick now. How's that sound for you? That sounds great. Thanks wait, so wait, much. wait. L- Tiger uh, is going to hold up a hand to the per- person in the suit and put a whole, one finger up kind of thing, like wait a moment kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I want to whisper like a bodyguard uh, to the team um that hopefully so that james can't hear yeah um i think it's james and say uh now i see a lot of ascended people around here are do we want to are you sure <laughs> do we want to be selling well what are you, you sure what do you mean are we trying to trick them or is it That's, okay well the, the reasoning was that Sebastian actually created this from uh, the staff. Okay, now, so we're selling this is a legitimate piece. Yeah, this is a legitimate piece by the artist that literally came into the spotlight in like three hours. So, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this is being sold as art. Okay, excellent. I'm going to turn that, What hearing that from the party, Tiger would turn that into uh, just looking like it's a security assessment of the room. So just kind of nodding and saying, okay, okay, that's yeah. fine. Thank you. Uh, and James kind of looks at you guys and says, now I understand that Mr. Uh here's an extraordinarily important person, yes. but I will have you know that when you're in my club, I will be given my due respect. So the next person that waves a finger in my face one time loses their head their family and their history does that sound fair tiger nods um impressed kind of thing like okay this is a guy i can uh, hang with i think uh, i think rippy has it has a different reaction he has that he has to like roll his eyes and like oh yes you're so strong and impressive of course could never do anything to cross you you make you mad like he's he is genuinely capitulating but he's doing it like the yeah fine we'll behave ourselves uh roll plus charisma sure uh can i roll with advantage because i just met him or not advantage sorry with a plus one because oh, i just with met pl- him yeah with plus okay. one yeah absolutely yep yeah. Maybe a 15? Oh, okay, so that, wow. I think that's like the highest roll possible in the yes, game. Yes, literally. <laughs> Two natural sixes plus three. Um, so as, as you kind of do that, um, James just has absolutely no fucking problem with that at all. That is a completely 100% friendly action. Excellent. <laughs> and James says, all right now, just so I have an idea of what kind of price range we're working with. What should we start the bid at for this uh, newest piece of us uh, new art? And what should the piece be called on the uh, bill? Oh, for those questions, I leave you in the capable hands of uh, Mr. Uz, talent manager, PR director, Mr. Bishop. Okay, okay, okay. Why are you whisper? All right, yes, <sighs> hello there. The crowd uh, hello. Oh, what a what a fantastic accent you've got there, Mr. Bishop Kane. Yes, I'm rather fond of yours as well. Now, Mr. Bishop, what exactly do you think we should start the bid on for this uh, fine piece of artwork? Well, you know, that depends. I was actually wondering if I could actually uh, perhaps get your help a little bit on that. Well, I do have a you number seem like of fine sort of pieces person of that has a keen eye for pieces of art. I do. I, I own a number of pieces of art myself. And uh, for this piece, uh, what's it called again? Uh, that is actually going to be called. I don't know if we actually officially named it. We, you know, we came up with choices. Early but I'm, spring, late winter. Uh, I thought wait, I thought it was the other way around, isn't it? Spring isn't it? and it, it summer, is. falls, winter. <laughs> winter's the name morning, of it is, summer's oh. love. <laughs> what are you just shouting over there? <laughs> Listen, it's interpretive, isn't it? It's transformative. It's a point of art. It's it's. Oh my god! All right, sorry about that. He's very excited. This is why he's not in charge of the media. 
<laughs> um, um, it's what is it? Early, early, uh, late, late winter, early spring. Uh, out of character, uh, late winter, early spring. Late winter, early spring. Yeah. It's late winter, early spring. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, I figure we're gonna bring in the heavy hitters. So, I figure if we start at, I don't know what, maybe three million. That Hold should on. get them pretty interested, but I assume it probably won't go for less than fifteen. But if we start at three, you know, they'll all figure they got a they got a fighting chance for it, kind of thing. Exactly. And uh, we'll let them we'll let them fight over it from I, there. That sounds like a fair spot. Can I roll? Absolutely. Can I roll to deceive him? Uh, and I guess I get plus one now because um, I successfully yeah, succeeded. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I guess that would mean that this is now. Would I be rolling at a plus four or or just a plus three? Because this has now replaced the halfling bonus. It would basically yeah. be a you just now have a permanent yes. plus three against. Sure. Him. Okay. Yep. So I would like to I would like to roll to as he says that as he says fifteen million. I would like to roll to see how convincing um, how convincingly Rippy can like roll his eyes in a concerned way, like he's looking around like is is mr uh going to be insulted by by the loan the low value of 15 million like is that gonna be enough i want rippy to see how convincingly he can be like oh fuck that's the highest they're gonna go oh shit okay yeah 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 yeah. go ahead and roll yep okay Whew. wow still wow. full success yeah so he doesn't have to um, actually do anything i just want him to believe yeah. that rippy's actually concerned yeah, yeah so james like i wouldn't say go for less than 15 million uh but oh, i mean of geez, course if we okay. started a higher value we could start at maybe seven million probably get it over 25 million uh, pretty easily i think but uh you know we'll, we'll get the we'll get the heavy hitters in here and uh, we'll get it all set up and uh, how would you like this displayed should i have a little uh an altar for it or would you like to maybe hold it up there or something like that oh. Perhaps an uh, perhaps an altar. I think Mister Erd is not particularly one for public speaking. He prefers to put all his passion into the art itself. Of course, I mean that's uh, we've got this magnificent piece of work right here, so uh, I can see the proofs in the pudding, as they say. Uh, well, well, I'll go ahead and get a little altar set up in the back room. I'll uh, get maybe uh, 20, 30 seats for our our heaviest hitters, and um, you know those with the discerning eye for fine art as one would obviously need to be able to appreciate this fine piece of uh late winter early spring oh boy sure yeah. i hope i got that right um so as a as an attempt to smooth them because i think once we have like 20 million i think we're going to be sitting pretty okay <laughs> yeah. um i want to i want to schmooze them ever so slightly and i want to i want to preemptively say and i presume like as if we've done this before <laughs> yeah um i presume you will be taking a 10 percent cut as per usual correct well, yes, 10%, uh, and that's, uh, well. I tell you what, if you manage to bring your heavy hitters in with enough of a positive attitude to what I dig deep into the wallets, we'll give you Boy, an Boy, that's really getting away from you, huh? That's, <laughs> that accent's really just kind of climbing up a tree and you're just chasing it, huh? Listen, I have the faintest idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the tea it's like the tease of the first thing to disappear and then the rest just kind of falls out after it huh <laughs> well if you play your cards right and you bring your buyers in a good mood maybe we'll find it within our hearts to give you an extra three percent thirteen percent well bad. that's not bad at all uh I think I can do that. I think I can convince them that this is a, a worthy cause. Uh, how many pieces have you sold at previous auctions? Too many to count. Yeah, that many. But, that many. But I will say that uh, whilst it's too many to count, I want to kind of le lean in. That's a little bit of an over-exaggeration. His pieces are extremely rare. Uh, go ahead and roll plus charisma. Uh, 
My God. Nice. The rolls are here for this, huh? (laughs) Boy, oh boy, the rolls are here for this. Money that is very clearly not going to matter all that much because you don't really ever put too many economic challenges in your sort of campaign. (laughs) But man, the moment we need to roll to, I don't know, stay alive, we are fucked. (laughs) Uh, The money's going to matter more for this arc. If you had to start rolling high for, for money, now is the time to be doing that. Very true. Um, and, uh, he kind of winks and he says, I understand. Um, and, uh, he kind of, uh, he kind of starts walking away and he kind of lifts his arms up and he says, get yourself some drinks. And, uh, when you've fully acquainted yourselves with Luminos, please find me in the back room where I will be setting up our, uh, impromptu auction. Lovely. Okay. And, uh. You kind of see him walk away. You kind of see the back room that he's talking about because you kind of see him go through the door kind of thing. Okay. And uh, you guys are now kind of uh, allowed to wander about the uh, Luminos as you would choose. Uh, I would like for Rippy, and I'm happy for everyone to do whatever they'd like. I would like for Rippy to go to the bar because I want Rippy to investigate uh, what he can try to do to curry favor with James. Like, can he buy him a specific kind of drink? What can he do as an extra little, like, oop, put you in my back pocket a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so, I, so basically, he's going to look for someone who looks like a regular and would know James well enough that he's going to try to talk to them, and I'll try to use some of my deception to schmooze them. Okay, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll plus wisdom to see if you can pick out someone in the crowd who looks like they might know, uh, James. Oh, <sighs> they had to end. It was yep. a 15 and an 11. <laughs> yep. Had to end at some point. Yep. Uh, you're looking around and it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Everyone here looks incredibly important. Okay. You do get the sense that probably everyone here knows James to some degree. Okay. But picking out someone who like really knows James, it's really hard at this point. Okay. Um, I think I think if that's the case, uh, Rippy would would look to talk to the person who looks the most sort of like haggard and down on their like like they they've had like the shittiest day and like they don't even register who's around them. They're just sitting there like face down in their drink. Yeah, okay, so uh, then as you kind of look around, <clears throat> everyone, like, no one here looks really haggard. Like, no one outwardly looks like they're having sure. a rough time. Oh, okay, sure, Until, I guess it's pretty, until you yeah. see, yeah, everyone here is yeah, incredibly right. successful sure. and incredibly powerful. Sure. But you do notice one, uh, you do notice this uh, woman who's uh, quite heavy set. Um, she's got kind of like a, a, a mohawk, and she's sitting at the bar. And the one thing that kind of tips you off is that uh, she's got like six bottles of beer beside her empty and she's oh. just drinking from the bottle Oh, and no one else is drinking from any bottle kind of thing. Interesting. Okay. Um, I would like for, uh, I would like for Rippy to uh, walk up and I can roll to see sort of how convincingly I do this because I want Rippy to walk up and um, order like, Hmm. I want him to like order a beer that's similar to the one that she's drinking. So uh, one that she, cause obviously she likes her beer that she would hear him order it and be like, Oh, interesting. Someone with like a similar taste in beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't really know the beers. Yeah. Here. I think I'll have to roll for it. Probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and roll plus wisdom again. Oh, okay. Okay. That one's at least a pass. Yeah. True. Um, and so you you kind of uh, look at the beers that she's having. You look and see kind of where they are in the in the kind of big cooler in the back, like the big stand up glass front cooler kind of thing. Yep. And uh, you know, there's a couple other beer types around it, so you just kind of order one of those, and uh, the bartender kind of gives you a bit of like a bit of a stink eye. Ah. Like, is there another person here ordering beer <laughs> by the? bottle <laughs> like what the fuck is happening to luminos <laughs> kind of look kind of thing um, okay and uh he kind of walks over and uh pops the top off the beer and he's like enjoy <laughs> 
and I think uh, I, I want Rippy to like sit down very casually, like very close, close enough that he's going to just catch the attention of that woman, but yeah. but not obviously trying to interact with her. And I want him to very satisfiedly like sit down and pop, like maybe pop the fucking bottle cap off with his teeth and then yeah. just start drinking straight out of the bottle. Um. Yeah, and you definitely notice her just kind of like, look at you like what the <laughs> hell i thought i was the only one in here just drinking by the bottle so she's definitely like noticed <laughs> i think uh so can you describe the atmosphere how how loud is the how loud is the background what are what are p are how how carefully are people managing their appearance like are people walking around you know lifting their pinkies when they drink or are they shit faced and falling down puking on themselves drunk or what is sort of the general uh, so, atmosphere yeah everyone is obviously trying to maintain a, a level of decorum kind of thing sure. like they all think they are the most important people here sure so they're all they all have a little bit of a high and mighty kind of vibe they're all um you know pretending like they're very important and like they're very proper and all that stuff um but like a lot of people here are fucking ugly drunk okay um <laughs> you can kind of see that from like the heavy back pats, um, the kind of slightly too forceful shoulder pushes. Um, <laughs> a person gets out of a chair and they stumble a little bit before they kind of correct themselves. So like people here are maintaining decorum, but they are getting fucked up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, good. So I would say that, uh, and, and how loud, how loud is it? How, how oh, loud yeah. does Rippy need uh, to talk so to be heard? At, at the at the bar where you're at yeah. eh, not too not too loud honestly pretty you, pre, you can hold a conversation at normal volume uh at the stage where the people are like dancing with their holographic uh disappearing outfits yep the the loud the the music is fucking mind-breakingly loud but it seems the sound seems to dampen quite quickly as it approaches the bar where you're at so i think what rippy would do is he's now turned around away from the bar and he's facing the room and acting as though he's kind of talking to himself, he'd kind of like hold the beer bottle up to his face and sort of say it as though he's addressing no one. Ha! It, bit dead in here, isn't it? And then I think he'd he'd like look at someone like sloppy drunk with like their tie wrapped around their forehead and like just <laughs> jamming out like really, really obviously having a pretty rough day. And he would sort of gesture with his beer bottle. It's like, I like someone's having fun. And then I think uh, he would turn to her and say something like, what about you? Uh, and uh, she's kind of like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just starts knocking back a beer. I, th I think Rippy would, <laughs> would look at her and say, I cheers to that. And would like clink his own beer bottle against his other <laughs> beer bottle sitting there. And yeah, then he'd yeah. take a drink and then uh, look at her. And I think he would like look for James in the crowd. And then he'd yeah. gesture to him with his beer bottle and say, is that the guy who owns the place? Um, and she goes, James? Yeah, that's him. How? How does a lovely lady like you know him? Oh, uh, he funded my first fight ring. Uh, you know, made a lot of money, gave a lot of money to him. Bought some more fight rings, you know. Okay, is he still into the fighting thing then? He's into the money from the fighting thing. Aha, ha, ha, okay. So is he looking for people who are good at fighting then or what? I mean, honestly, he's more interested in like, you know, how much money the fight rings bring in. <laughs> he so really doesn't care about the fights. He doesn't care about the fighters. He just cares about how much money the fight ring brings in. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, perfect, lovely. Thank you so much. Uh right okay if someone were looking to make a big impression on him what would you recommend they do money <laughs> money eh? is that about it's pretty strong motivator that that's about it money or uh i guess uh pushing over a big chest piece but wait what do you mean pushing over a big oh you're using a metaphor yeah you know like murder an important person and blow up their business or something <laughs> Do you know if he's if he's down bad with anyone? Uh, I mean, he usually kills him himself. Uh, but, uh, 
But just money then, eh? Mostly. Yeah, no, the just thing. these money and uh, money and, and uh, the more impressive things you do to get the money, the better. It really liked when I had uh, 30 people kill themselves and each other oh. uh, in the fight ring one time. Uh, oh. that, brought a, that brought a lot of money in. He thought that was pretty fun. Oh, boy. Yeah. Heartwarming story, that one, isn't it? Yeah, no, he, uh, the more, the bigger the spectacle, the more the money, the more impressed James is. Okay, okay. Well, that's important to know. It's important to know. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, cheers. Why don't I go ahead and buy you a bit of a drink? Hey? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say no to free drinks. Okay. So I think I think Rippy would like to buy her tab and then head back to the group with his his newfound knowledge about what they can do to sort of ingratiate themselves a little bit more if they want to. Okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, um while we're here, if if I can, um we I, I'll kind of leave this up to your discretion. I want to mingle and kind of like do what I told you like I, I want to be able to so like oh, I know a guy. Like I want to actually kind of like lay the groundwork just for yeah, knowing yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so base, why don't you roll plus charisma to see how well you can kind of schmooze around? Uh. <laughs> hey, a nice. full 12. Um, so I'd say you probably get a good, a good, a good meet and greet on with. Uh, I mean, it's a 12. You basically uh, you meet all the people that are worth meeting here. Um, you don't know them really well. You don't you don't know their life stories. You probably you're not on a first name basis with them. Uh, you haven't really made too much of an impact, but you know them all. Sounds good. Perfect. Yep. Uh, OK, is there anything else anyone else would like to do in the uh, in the in the in the Luminos before the uh, auction starts? No, I think I'm ready for the auction. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Just sticking in garden uh, us yep. body. <laughs> um, okay, then I will say you guys uh, are kind of uh, schmoozing, boozing, getting your drink on, getting your meat on, uh, just just taking it all in. Luminos is like legitimately a fantastic nightclub, fantastically uh, 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 luxurious lounge kind of thing. Sure. And... Um, the people here are extraordinarily powerful, extraordinarily influential, and extraordinarily dangerous. Ah. And then the elevator dings as the heavy hitters have arrived. And you see some uh, just like oppressively intimidating people. It's not even like the way they look, although they do look quite, uh, quite oppressive. Some of them are in fine tuxedo and evening wear. Some of them are in full military outfits. Ah. But the one that catches your eye the most is an individual oh. <laughs> wearing a black robe uh -oh. and standing up very straight. Oh. As you notice the unmistakable visage of Vetha, oh, who has come to bid on Sebastian's art. Ooh. Oh, jeez. And we'll pick it up next time. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm glad it's a legitimate art piece and we're not trying yeah, to make right? it. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad I'm actually that. trying to make money legit. 